all that dino magic to life. We're also going to hear from the very talented Dakota Johnson. And later, we're looking back on Speed, the movie, 28 years later, with one of our favorite clips of Sandra Bullock. But first, here are today's pop start headlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the I pop star chair. That's that my rally cry. I like yeah. that. A little Ed McMahon there. A lot of coffee this morning. All right, I read about this story yesterday. I'm glad it's going to lead off. Squid Game for real. It's only a matter of time, but officially it is happening, people. Netflix announcing its biggest series of all time, which followed 456 people competing in, for cash in life or death games. It's now going to become a reality series. 456 players are going to take on a series of games for the chance to win 4.56 million bucks. Netflix saying it's the biggest lump sum cash prize in TV history. And presumably, we hope, no one's actually going to get hurt in this version of the show called Squid Game The Challenge. YouTube star Mr. Beast has already done something similar, recreating this show with amazing detail to have people compete in games like Red Light, Green Light. But this Netflix show is taking it to the next level with that huge cash prize. And you can sign up now for a chance to compete. Good luck. All right, next up, Top Gun Maverick has hit another major milestone. As of this week, the Tom Cruise starring sequel has become the highest grossing movie of the year. Since debuting on May 27th, Top Gun has pulled in 401.8 million bucks domestically at the box office, officially beating out Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness for that number one spot. Clearly, there was an appetite for nostalgia, the fighter jets, the need for speed, the beach volleyball scenes, all that stuff, <laughs> propelling the film to its massive box office. Next up, Savannah Jeopardy. Every night, talented people get up there. Well, you hosted it, so I figured yeah. I'd just oh, want okay. you in. Like, nice. Yeah, the people get up there and they, you know, they answer questions that would stump most of us. But sometimes, sometimes, not often, a contestant gets stumped at a question that we all know the answer to. This week, that happened to Mazin Omer. Knights 400. To honor his father, this star here was knighted in his birth name. So he's Sir Morris Micklewhite. Mazin. Was Mick Jagger? No. Lisa, who is Michael Caine? Oh, yeah. You thought, As wow, you can imagine, Jagger. the wrong answer went Mick viral. Yikes. Yeah, many wondering what the world... I couldn't think of his name either right then, Eric. Well, by yeah. the way, yeah. no. Not, what if Michael Caine Jagger. was the lead singer of the Rolling Stones? That'd be interesting. <laughs> it would be. And maybe Mazin, in his defense, just his brain went to, okay, who's knighted? Uh -huh. Mick Jagger's yes, knighted also. Yeah. Yes. He could have yes. said Elton John. He could have said Sir Anthony Hopkins, yeah. or who knows? Anyway, uh, next up, Only Murders in the Building, the critically acclaimed show starring Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena yep. Gomez yes. as amateur oh true crime prod podcasters is coming back for season two. We now have a new trailer ahead of the premiere teasing more comedy, more guest stars, and of course, more murder. Yeah. Our lives blow up if we all go yeah. down for this. Don't you want to clear your name too? I have to see this through. Let's focus. I'll be right back. Well, you can't leave me here. I got good at parties. Oh, I, I'm, I'm nervous to talk to people because I can come off creepy. <laughs> Evidence keeps showing up in our apartments. Who's ever doing this? Is toying with us. This ends the investigation into a whole new direction. We hope it will take us to clues. It's a wall. And suspects. So what do we know about my daughter's murder? Maybe she killed one. You think that woman stabbed someone eight times? We'll put a pin in her for now. <laughs> the minute Uncle Al tells me to start watching that, I'll start watching. He's, oh, he's, uh, he knows me. Are you in? Yeah. He yeah. knows oh, yeah. me. Absolutely. Are you, you already in on that? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You great. have to, I have to get in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's our pop star. That was great. And now to the reason they call the show Pop Star Plus, a couple extra headlines for you. And we'll start with a look at the new docuseries, America the Beautiful. Michael B. Jordan and National Geographic have teamed up for a six episode series showcasing the wildlife of North America, quote, as you have never seen it before. Jordan narrates the new series, and the first trailer promises stunning visuals of our country and the wildlife inhabiting it, along with a soundtrack from a diverse group of musicians. This is America. See to shining sea. See, now I want to watch that just after that little clip. America the Beautiful hits Disney Plus 
on the very appropriate day of July 4th. Next up, Brad Pitt and Gwyneth Paltrow. Let's take a little walk down memory lane. You might recall back in the mid-90s when Brad and Gwen were an item. The two actors were engaged for a time before calling it off and, of course, going their separate ways. But the two are making headlines again after a conversation they had on Gwyneth's Goop website where they were meant to talk about lifestyle things but ended up talking a little bit about their time together making the Internet collectively fawn. Pitt remarking, and I quote, Everything works out, doesn't it? To which Paltrow says back, quote, I finally found the Brad I was supposed to marry. It just took me 20 years. That's a reference to her husband now, Brad Falchuk. Pitt responds, and it's lovely to have you as a friend now, adding, and again I quote, and I do love you. To which Gwyneth replied, I love you so much. This is like a soap opera going back and forth. It's like a tennis match there. Cool that they're on good terms, though, that's for sure. Those are your pop star headlines. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back and show you how they make dinosaurs in movies look so darn real. We've got some behind-the-scenes scenes secrets for that with the director of Jurassic World Dominion. Coming up. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Director Colin Trevorrow first helped relaunch the Jurassic franchise back in 2015 with Jurassic World, and he's now at the helm again in the third and latest installment, Jurassic World Dominion. Now, maybe you've heard of it. Of course you have. It's number one at the box office right now. Or is that Maverick? I don't know. They seem to be going back and forth. Either way, Colin spoke to us about what it was like to pull off an epic final chapter to the dinosaur story. Jurassic World Dominion is uh, a completely different kind of film than any of the other Jurassic movies have been. The dinosaurs are out in the world. Uh, they are creating havoc and genetic power has uh, reached a point where it's threatening the survival of life on this planet. I wanted to direct the third film because just being able to wrap up the story we've been telling the whole time, to be able to take these characters who I care about and make sure that they find a home together and feel safe. And I include the dinosaurs in that, you know, the T-Rex. These are characters from our childhood who we love. And so making sure that all of these stories are wrapped up in a way that feels consistent, that when you watch all three movies together, it feels like one long story, which I really believe it does. That was really important to me. And the fact that we made it during a pandemic was really challenging. I was directing a movie in two different countries at the same time. It was hard, but we did it. I wanted it to be a warmer film uh, than the previous two. We, we were kind of a cold blue in Jurassic World. And then in this film, I wanted it to feel like a big, robust, romantic adventure. Uh, it's shot on film, which is really important to me. And hopefully by the time you get to the end of it, you will feel like you've, you've been through a lot and the people just look tired and bruised. And that's the kind of adventure I like. From a production design standpoint, it's really important to me uh, and Kevin Jenkins, our designer, that we are as practical as possible at any given turn. So we didn't make a movie in a computer. There are not uh, digitally designed backgrounds. We built 112 sets. We made animatronic dinosaurs. Uh, we put people uh, in real environments with real animals so they could look around and be confident that they were actually there. And then the biggest challenge is when you build something that's as spectacular as some of the things that we built to make sure not to constantly just be in a 
giant wide shot uh, showing off your amazing set to the audience, but really get in there and live in it as if it's a real place. It was very important to use animatronics because uh, not only is that a legacy, it's, it's what made us love Jurassic Park so much is that we actually saw those animals were real. Uh, but in our film, because we have such great actors, to be able to provide them the opportunity to not be uh, emoting across from a tennis ball, but actually be able to reach out and touch something in the way that Laura Dern does in her scene when she moves her finger back and forth. The puppeteers naturally reacted to what she was doing, so there was an actual exchange uh, between living things, which I think is extremely special. What is that? Biggest carnivore the world has ever seen. Run! The reality of these movies, I think, really matters. It's one of the very few franchises uh, where the main characters are just regular people. They're professionals, they're scientists, they're parents. And so I wanted to make sure the whole world felt as if it actually existed because we are talking about some real world scientific issues in the film. Some of the dangers that we present uh, are dangers that exist. Uh, and so the closer we could get it uh, to our reality, I think the more believable it's gonna be. Some of the more insane things that we do in the film uh, that you're gonna buy. Working with this cast was just one of the most satisfying creative experiences that I've had because I was able to work with legendary actors like Laura Dern and Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum, B.D. Wong, and then these good friends of mine uh, who I've been making these movies with for eight years, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, and then these new friends who I think make as much of an impact on this movie as any of the legends and icons who have come before in Mamadou Eche and DeWanda Wise and Tishan Lachman. All of them together uh, as as one group, especially at the end when they're literally all together as one group, uh, was it was just such a wonderful experience. And it was it was during a really challenging time. We were all very afraid. We were making a film during uh, COVID, uh, and yet because of all of these people, because they have such brilliant skill sets and also just beautiful souls, we managed to get through it together. I wanted to pay homage to uh, the spirit of Jurassic Park, but I didn't want to make a carbon copy of Jurassic Park. And that's something that I've really focused on in each of the movies. We feel like in order to honor what Steven created and what Michael Crichton created, we have to aggressively bring new ideas to the table because that's what they did. And so these movies are different. They're a completely different kind of experience. And yet I know that Jurassic Park's never going away. They'll all be there for people to enjoy together. So to me, it was making sure that the characters that we were bringing back felt like they were presented in a way that was honest and authentic and real. And you actually believe these were human beings who've been alive for the same 30 years that some of us have been alive for. And a lot's happened in those 30 years. People love this franchise, but I think they just love dinosaurs. And however we present dinosaurs in each of these films, I hope that at all times it taps into, yes, a fear that we have of them, but also a humility that we have in the face of them, this recognition that they walked the earth, they share the same soil as us, and yet they look so different and lived so long ago and actually lived so much longer than we have. It's a very grand idea and a, and a really unique relationship between you know movie creature, movie monster, and audience. When people leave the theater, I really hope that there's a sense that uh, we made these movies for a reason. And we, we weren't just making a, a bunch of situations where people could get chomped by dinosaurs, even though we do that, and I enjoy it. These are movies that, that did have something to say, and ultimately we landed in a place that, that hopefully you can walk out of there with your family feeling a sense that, that we are small and we are fragile, but also we can succeed and we can survive if we do it together. Thanks to Colin for chatting with us. And of course, Jurassic World Dominion from our parent company, NBC Universal, is in theaters now. Just ahead, we'll catch up with the talented Dakota Johnson. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news.
news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. The lovely Dakota Johnson stars in the new film Cha Cha Real Smooth. And she stopped by Studio 1A to tell us all about it. Dakota Johnson has become a favorite to watch in recent years from the mega hit, of course, Fifty Shades, to that franchise, to the darlings like the Peanut Butter Falcon in her newest film, The Cha-Cha Real Smooth. She plays a mom who gets tangled up with a young man trying to find his place after college. She uh, struggles for some challenges on her own. Take a look. Have you ever been depressed? Whoa. Downer alert. You don't have to sound the downer alert. I'm just curious. I've always been depressed. Whoa. <laughs> downer alert. <laughs> before Lola was born? Especially before Lola was born. Raising her made me better. Okay, first of all, Dakota, thank you for being here. Thank you. This movie is getting all kinds of atta girls. It did, it got an audience uh, award at Sundance. You just premiered at Tribeca. And you just said something to me five seconds ago that struck <laughs> me. You said this, of all the things you've ever done in your career, this is the thing you're most proud of. Yeah, I do feel the most Why is that? Proud. Yeah. I don't know. We, we also screened at South by Southwest, and it was the first time that I watched the movie in a movie theater with an audience. And it felt so different than just being an actress in a movie, because it like I made the whole thing from the very beginning to the very end, and my blood, sweat, and tears are all over it, and I just felt so proud. I mean, th okay, you have a, obviously a, this production company, and this was your first. Why did you choose this? What was it about this story that captivated you? Well, Cooper Reif, the director, yeah. writer, and star of the movie, is just a very, very talented, sensitive, um, open-hearted, uh, unique person. He has a very specific point of view yeah. on the world and people and he made a little movie before and I love championing, you know, up and coming filmmakers and writers, so it was kind of perfect and he just the story is also really poignant, you know, and it's um it's 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 special. It's a tiny little special specific thing and I those are the things that I love the most. You play a mother of an autistic child. Yes. And just explain a little bit about the premise of the movie. The movie is about a young man who leaves college and he goes home and he doesn't really know what to do with himself and he gets a job as a party starter at bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs okay. and he falls in love with a young mother of a teenage autistic girl. Uh -huh. um, and we, we found this actress, Vanessa Berghart, who's an autistic actress and she's so wow. brilliant and so talented and I... I like feel like we struck gold, and wow. I can't wait for people to see her work. I love the title. It's called the. It's called Cha Cha Real Smooth. Do y'all know the Cha Cha Slide? <laughs> Do you have it, Pete? Can you crank it for one second just to get us in the mood a little bit? Okay, they're getting it. Wait, do y'all remember it? Funky. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Cha Cha right, now, Real Smooth is a specific part of this song that was yes. pulled out. What, why that title? Well, um, the, cha, the Cha Cha Slide, there's one part where you Cha Cha Real Smooth and 
that's the part of the song where you get to do your own little boogie. Um, and I think that that's kind of what this movie is about, is the part of your life where you figure out who you are and you do your own thing. I love that. Um, you are obviously the daughter of Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson. Was it in you <laughs> since you were a little girl? Were you like, I'm going to follow them? Or did you originally have like another path? Did you want to sort of not do what your parents did? No, I always wanted to be an actress. You did? Yeah, I was obsessed. I wanted to be, when they were on set, I wanted to be on set. I wanted. I just loved movies. And I was the kind of kid I would watch movies over and over oh, again. Oh, you did? Yeah, like multiple times a day. What was your go-to when you were younger? What like really shaped you, do you think? Mary Poppins. Oh, you did? For it did. sure. And then Home Alone was a big staple. The Wizard of Oz. You know, but those, I would watch them like every day for a yeah. couple years and then move on to another one. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is so amazing. I know you have another project in the hopper, too. What else do you have coming out? Yes, Persuasion. Persuasion yeah. is coming out um, in July, July 15th. Oh, God. Wow. You're, I may have gotten that wrong. Well, you're close. You're in the ballpark. Congratulations <laughs> on you. this especially. Cha-Cha Real Smooth, the project you're the most proud of, of everything you've ever done. And maybe when you come back next time with the next project, it might be just another one that you'll maybe. have on your belt. That would be nice. Thank you. You guys, do you love Dakota or what? Yeah. on Apple TV Plus on Friday. That is a lovely young lady. We appreciate her time here in Studio 1A, Dakota Johnson. Thank you. All right, next up, we've got the need for speed, but not Top Gun, the Keanu Reeves Sandra Bullock classic. It's marking its 28th anniversary, and we'll give it its moment from our vault after this. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, can we still have work to do? In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. We certainly love Sandra Bullock around here, and today we thought it would be fun to revisit one of her first films, the classic action-packed thriller Speed, which turns 28th this month. And to mark that occasion, here she is talking about it on today, all the way back in 1994. Bullock got her first big break playing the missing woman in the American remake of The Vanishing. Nice Last year, she played an aspiring country and western singer in The Thing Called Love. You know, I've been sitting here and thinking that um, maybe I'll go to Hollywood, become a movie star. And become a movie star she did. She appeared opposite Sylvester Stallone in Demolition Man. I'm impressed. <laughs> and now she's back in action in the new movie Speed, co-starring with Keanu Reeves and Dennis Hopper. And this morning, Sandra Bullock's up early. She's at our studios in Burbank. Sandra, good morning. How you doing? <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> oh. Now, what is, now, I didn't write that thing earlier, the one that Katie said, what is this dark-haired, somewhat funny chick label? Where's that from? My mother. No. <laughs> I have no idea. Huh? I have no idea. Are you sure you didn't write it? I swear, I had nothing to do with it. Absolutely okay. nothing. I have, I have no idea where the somewhat came from. Okay. Because I would have just had dark haired funny chick. Oh, yeah? That, that label yeah. fits? Yeah, pretty, the hair is dark. Yeah, I, I, I got so. that part of it, yeah. 
Um, is it true that people thought you were a little bit um, off center for taking the co-starring role in this film? Is that is that right? What I hear? Well, I think I think about the whole project. People were a little, um, I don't know if hesitant or they just they criticized a lot because um, I just done Demolition Man, and so taking something like this that quickly afterwards, I think made people think that I was a little out of my mind, which <laughs> my family's known for years. Um, but it, it was just so good. You can't, you can't afford not to do roles like this when they come along, regardless, you know, if they happen to be in two action movies or if they happen to be in two comedies or in two dramas, you know, you just you take it when you can get it. So, no, con um, no concerns that Hollywood then labels you a, 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 a action film actress? Not really, because I don't do all that much of the action, you know. I mean, they have the, um, the very strong and capable men to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, look, in, in this film, you play um, Annie, a passenger who, who becomes the driver of a bus that is set to explode if it goes less than 50 miles an hour. Um, let me play devil's advocate. Why would a serious actress want to do such a role? Because it's probably, um, it was probably one of the hardest roles I had to do. Because you have such a short time in which to establish a character, and the, the material was so well written, and it was funny, and it was edgy, and... At that time, I was so exhausted. I mean, the, the thought of doing something that was going to be so easy and fun to do um, was very appealing. And and even though it is an action film, even though the action takes precedent over you know the development of somebody, you know, someone's character, um, the short amount of time that you have to sort of establish who you are and what your character is about is is incredibly challenging. You have to get across an emotion within like two seconds and have everyone believe you. So it you don't have the luxury of the words to to. Um, to help you into the character, and it, it sort of fine-tunes you a little bit. I mean, I well, think I came out of it a little more um, trained, actually. Well, let's <laughs> check out your emotion and your driving ability <laughs> in this clip from Speed. Nice work. Nice work. Hey, look. Um, in in terms in terms of your career, is, is this is this film are you viewing this as kind of like a springboard to bigger and better? Um, you know, actually, every time I do something, I never look at it as a springboard to anything else because I assume that anything that I'm in, nobody's going to want to go see. Oh, so. come on. No, I mean, you know, I think I've I've really taken on a very pessimistic attitude, but I I had such a good time in it and. The, the people I just really liked. So I, I would hope that it would do well and that everyone would like it as much as I did, but usually that's not the case. So if, if it is a springboard, that would be really great and I would really appreciate it. But if it isn't, then, you know, I've, I've got enough energy to keep doing this until, you know, I do learn how to dive off the <laughs> springboard. Um, look, I got one, one question that has nothing to do with anything other than that I was just curious, looking at your background. You're the mm -hmm. daughter of an opera singer and an opera coach. Mm -hmm. Did you ever come close to having an, any opera ambitions? Nobody wants to hear me sing. Nobody who's ever heard me sing wants to hear me sing. I, oh. I can yell loudly and I benefited from good lungs, but, I got you. you know, nobody wants to hear I got me you. sing. Well, you're a dark-haired, somewhat funny, somewhat singing chick. Yeah. Hey, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank good luck. you very much. Thank you. Well, nothing like a good trip to the 90s to put you in a good mood. All right, that's going to do it for today's Pop Star Plus. Another stellar show for you is being produced as we speak, and we'll have it for you tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.
I'm Vicki Wynn. Thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential Summer Safety Edition. Now, we're going to talk about keeping safe this summer, but we're also going to tell you how to save on summer essentials. With inflation reaching record levels, we'll give you some tips to make your money work. But first, the Consumer Product Safety Commission says drownings usually spike during the summer, but these accidents are preventable. Here are some simple reminders. The unmistakable sound of summer. Kids playing in the pool. But without proper attention, fun can quickly take a tragic turn. On average, more than 900 kids die each year from drowning in the U.S. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death among kids ages 1 to 4. And it's not just pools you need to be worried about. Ponds like this and other natural bodies of water can also lure kids. So we brought in Mary O'Donohue. She's the senior aquatics director at the YMCA to talk to us about some basic summer safety tips. It takes as little as 20 seconds for someone to go under the water and not be able to get back to the surface. There are some basic tips that you can evaluate uh, how your children are comfortable in the water. Okay, I have my three girls waiting, eager to get into the pool, so let's go. We are all suited up, ready to go. Emmy and Odessa, they're older, they know how to swim. Renly does not know how to swim yet, and this would be their first swim of the season, so what should we be doing right now? We're gonna look for a Coast Guard approved life jacket for non-swimmers, and you're also looking at the weight category. So this looks like it will fit her, it's 30 to 50 pounds. You wanna make sure it fits snugly. How does that feel, Boo? Good. Next, the big girls are up for a quick water competency check. You wanna make sure that they can independently submerge in the water when they come back up that they can turn around and look to see where the safest place is to get out or grab a hold of and be able to climb out independently. Check to see if they can swim the length of the pool and ask them to tread water for a minute. Water for, water for, okay, lay, lay down. Okay, okay, okay. So Mary, what if you have a child that's not uh, really into being in the pool? And that's fine. Just let them be comfortable in how they are. Sometimes it's just sitting on the wall, putting their feet in. Having the uh, Coast Guard approved life jacket on will ensure that if they do get into the water, they're going to be safe. Pool toys are fun, but they can also be dangerous because they block your view of who's in the water. It doesn't look like there are any kids in the water right now, but there are. So make sure you take the pool toys out when you're not using them. It's also important to have a sturdy gate with openings that don't allow little ones to slip through. And you want to make sure the gate is self-locking. And don't forget kiddie pools and above ground pools. Experts say children can drown in as little as an inch and a half of water. So empty those smaller pools after using them and remove the ladder from larger pools. And no matter what kind of water the kids are in, always designate a water watcher, an adult assigned to watch the kids at all times. Tips to keep your family safe while swimming this summer. Now, even if your child is a good swimmer, fatigue can kick in. So set a timer to remind everyone to take a break and importantly, hydrate. With more on summer safety, NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Beth. So Dr. Azar, let's talk about heat exhaustion. Yes. Let's get an idea of like, what are some of the warning signs we should be watching out for? So the number one thing, Vicki, is that people can either pass out or they have a core body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. Most of us don't have a digital thermometer on board, so others signs and symptoms to look for would be uh, confusion, headache, lightheadedness, dry skin. People think a lot, well, if you're overheated, you're going to be sweating a lot. Mm. No, people who have heat exhaustion will actually have very red, very hot, very dry skin. That's a very good clue. For. Okay, so if you see someone who is experiencing that, what should you do? So the first thing to do is move them into a cool area, so a shady area under a tree, air conditioning if you can. We have some props with us yeah. here. Yeah. If you have the, um, uh, uh, if you're near ice packs, let's say you're at a picnic yeah, or something okay. like that, the places to put them under the neck, under the arm, in the groin, those are areas where a lot of blood vessels, that can okay. start to cool the temperature down. A big misconception is that you put people in an ice bath. Uh -huh. We don't want you doing that unless it was someone who has exertional exhaustion, meaning like a, a, an athlete who did a vigorous workout. Mm -hmm. They can go in an ice tub. Nobody else should go into an ice tub. And call 911. You should actually do that before you start initiating first aid because it is a medical emergency. Okay, that's good to know. So let's talk about prevention. How do you prevent yourself from becoming overheated? Well, it's really about dehydration. Mm -hmm. So obviously, 
day sun exposure is the big one. And I think people often think, well, I'm just going to drink a lot of water and a lot of fluids, and that certainly can be beneficial. But you can also eat foods that have a lot or a high water content. Yeah. We're talking strawberries, uh -huh. peaches, lettuce in salads, watermelon, yeah. celery, cucumbers. What to avoid? Alcohol is a big one. Alcohol definitely dehydrates. And we have here our good old Yeah, what about show. coffee? So we did think for a long time that caffeine acted as what's called a diuretic, uh -huh. meaning that it made you pee a lot yes. and that you would lose fluid that way. You really can't dehydrate yourself with caffeinated beverages really? on their own. Right. So if you're drinking an iced coffee, there's a lot of water in there too. So that's you okay. Enjoy your caffeinated beverages, but just keep an, keep an eye on how much you're sweating and how much you're taking it. And make sure you drink more water for alcohol. That's like an important rule, right? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Alcohol in the sun is just a big no-no. I know, and but that it mixes a lot during the summer, so people it gotta pay really attention. Does. Let's talk careful. about this. The debate over spray sunscreen versus cream sunscreen. Yes. Is there a difference and is one better than the other? Right. So if you ask, most dermatologists will say the best sunscreen is the sunscreen that you actually apply. Mm. And you know this, mm -hmm. Vic, my kids are a little older now, yeah. but trying to have your fidgety kids stay still to apply lotion is not that easy. Right. So for a lot of us moms and dads out there, it is easier to spray. Okay. Spray is fine as long as the spray is actually getting onto the skin. So be aware of, of wind and that kind of thing. Yeah. I like to apply the spray and then make sure that you rub it in. But it's just as good SPF 30 or above. Okay. Reapply every two hours. Reapply, especially if you're doing vigorous exercise and, and sweating. sweating or mm -hmm. swimming. Every time you come out of the pool, you have to reapply and let it sink in for about 15 or 20 minutes before and you go back in the sun. If you're spraying, make sure you do it outside in a well-ventilated spot. In a, in a well-ventilated spot, yes. Okay, and I want to mention, obviously, you talked about you have we have hats and, of course, that sun protective clothing is important, too. Very. And you want to do, generally speaking, like colored light, okay. weight, hats, that kind of thing. If you can look through the piece of clothing, that's not thick enough, oh, right? You want to be able it's, it's okay. more like you want it to be more opaque, mm -hmm. light colored and light, but still that you can't see the light through it. Then you know you're pretty well covered. Dr. Natalie Azar, you are the best. Thank you Thank for covering you so sun much safety for having with us. us. Good to see you. All right, well, still to come from grilling to fireworks, hacks to keep your family safe all season long, plus a warning about one of the top causes of boating related deaths, what you need to know before heading out. And later, save or splurge, how to stretch your dollars on summer necessities. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back after 49 years of Title IX. And we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. No doubt you've heard of carbon monoxide poisoning, but did you know it's also a concern out on the open water? The Coast Guard says it's among the top five causes of boating-related deaths each year. Our investigation reveals how quickly carbon monoxide gas can build up and what you need to know before your next boat trip. Go, go, go. Ali Sidlowski was the picture of health, a Division I soccer player at the University of Cincinnati. But last summer, after a day of boating on an Ohio lake, Allie went into the water for a dip. She never resurfaced. 911, where is your emergency? We're on East Fork Lake. Uh, a girl jumped in. She did not have a life jacket on. And she's not surfaced yet? No. The boat was running, and we think the carbon monoxide made her pass out. 
The coroner later confirmed the suspicion Allie's cause of death was drowning with a contributing cause of carbon monoxide intoxication. There's still part of us thinking that she's coming home. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel real. For the first time, Allie's parents, Dave and Tracy Sidlowski, shared their story. When you got the call and they told you your daughter had drowned, so what did you think? Well, I was confused because Allie knew how to swim. It didn't make sense. Her parents say Allie grew up swimming in their backyard pool. Did you have any concept that this was a possibility, that someone could die of carbon monoxide poisoning from a boat? 100%, no. 100%, no. The U.S. Coast Guard reports 41 incidents of boat-related carbon monoxide poisoning and five deaths in 2020. Experts say carbon monoxide from a boat's engine can build up, especially while the boat is idling or moving at slow speeds, creating an invisible cloud. That toxic gas can cause lethargy, headaches, nausea, too much, and it's lethal which is why people should avoid breathing in the exhaust expelled from the engine, usually located in the back. The Sidlowski family attorney rented this boat, similar to the one Allie was riding, for our demonstration. Allie's friends on the boat that day say she was sitting in the back in an area called the swimming deck. You can see these look like seats, there are cushions, even a cup holder for drinks. But according to the boat maker, this is not a designated seating area. At the time, the Yamaha owner's manual said passengers must always sit in a designated seating area. This diagram highlights these seats as safe, but not the swimming deck. Yamaha also warns, stay away from the swim platform area while the engines are running. Exhaust gases coming from underneath it contain carbon monoxide. This is not a problem to be solved in the owner's manual, okay? There should not be seats in the danger zone. Attorney John Eustel filed a lawsuit on behalf of Ali's family. <laughs> To understand how quickly carbon monoxide can build up, I used this special meter. Anything above 200 parts per million and an alarm goes off. With the engine idling, it only took a few minutes. Wow, we're over 400, 500, 600, up to 700 now, climbing quickly. We're up more than 400, 500. This alarm is going off. Dr. Bill Benda is a professor of emergency medicine at Florida Atlantic University and an avid boater. He was with me for the readings. We were getting readings above 500, 600, 700 parts per million. What does that tell you about that area of the boat? That is definitely a danger zone and you should remove yourselves and your children from that area of the boat immediately. Do you think carbon monoxide poisoning incidents are underreported? Absolutely. And why is that? It's because someone comes to us and they don't tell us the circumstances around which they started feeling ill. And so we assume it's something much more simple and common like dehydration, sun exposure, alcohol use, seasickness. Experts also warn you shouldn't swim near an idling boat. Look what happened when we took our meter to this popular swim spot in Florida. What are you seeing? 300 parts per million. Our producer, Joe Enoch, collected readings from the air around the Yamaha and other boats. Joe, I hear it going off. What are you getting? I'm getting 100 up to 400 parts per million. He even measured the air near these boaters who were stunned by the readings. We're getting readings of 300 and up. You see how far away we are from the boat engine? Did you know that this is something that could happen? I had no idea. That is crazy because every time we go to the sandbar, we leave the boat motor running so it could keep speakers running and stuff. Yamaha declined to be interviewed, writing, we do not make comments regarding current, pending, or possible litigation. After our story first aired, Yamaha updated their website with this graphic adding, warning, do not occupy the stern of the boat when engines are running due to the possibility of carbon monoxide poisoning and falling. As for the Sidlowski family, they hope Ali's legacy is one that saves lives. We can't bring our daughter back, but if we can try to save other people from having to go through this, we want to do our best to do that. It is preventable. Our thanks to the Sidlowski family for speaking to us. The CDC, Coast Guard, and Marine Manufacturers Association say swimming decks can be particularly dangerous when the engine is on because you're on top of where the engine vents and the exhaust. So this is a potential danger for any boat. You really want to pay attention to where you sit and whether you start feeling symptoms like nausea, headache, or sleepiness. And we should mention while shooting this story, we took multiple breaks away from the engines to keep ourselves and our crew safe. 
Well, one of my favorite holidays, 4th of July, but before you do anything, some must-see safety tips and hacks to make sure everyone has a great time while staying safe. It's the 4th of July, and that means summer. Time to head outside and enjoy the weather. And if you're like me, there will be a lot of grilling happening in your house, but are you using one of these to clean your grates? Well, the metal bristles work great for cleaning, but they can also come out of the brush and get stuck in your food. So here is a fantastic alternative, an onion. Yeah, an onion. Check it out. It works really well to get all that gunk off of the grates. And if you don't have an onion, another quick, easy trick, aluminum foil. Just take a ball and get to scrubbing. Also, as you're getting ready to grill that meat, make sure you keep it refrigerated. The USDA says anything that's uncooked left out for more than an hour in this summer weather could make you sick. Serving adult beverages at the party? I like to use two different color cups, red ones for the grown-ups and the alcoholic beverages, blue ones for the kid-friendly drinks. There you go, ask me. That way, there is no confusion. And it just wouldn't be the 4th of July without fireworks. If you're heading out to a big show, it's gonna be amazing. But one thing's for sure, it's gonna be loud. And if you are bringing your little ones, don't forget the ear protection. I like these ones, they go over the ears just like this. Jay's helping us out. Those feel okay, Jay? Awesome. And if you can't find those in time, well, these work just as well, the traditional earplugs. Now let's talk about the at-home fireworks. So much fun but they can also be incredibly dangerous. So before you light off those one, two, three goes or the rainbow shower, wow, this brings me back. Make sure you've done your homework. Fire extinguisher at the ready, have it out, know how to use it. And don't forget, sparklers, very fun, but even something as small as this can start a big fire. So have the bucket of water ready and when everything's done, extinguish it and you're safe. And of course, check to see if it's legal to light fireworks where you live. Here's a great tip for when you venture out into the crowds for fireworks. Use a temporary tattoo with your name and phone number so if your child gets lost, someone can call you right away. And you can get this temporary tattoo paper online, print it out at home, that's what I did. You don't have time for that. Permanent marker works just as well. Pool parties are always fun, but here's some tips. Be sure to designate a responsible and sober adult. I'll take that, thank you to watch the pool. As an additional safety measure, there's a number of high-tech tools that can help you in case of a potential pool safety incident. There's this bracelet by Safety Turtle, and it will sound an alarm the second your kid hits the water. And this is super loud. There's no way you're gonna miss this alarm. And it works for your pets, too, if your dog is not a strong swimmer, right, Peanut? And you've definitely heard this before, but don't forget about the sunscreen. Reapply that sunscreen about every hour. We all have our phones with us all the time. Just set a timer, easy reminder. And a great rule of thumb for exactly how much sunscreen to use, the experts recommend a shot glass full. But really, you can never get too much. And just a reminder, every year animal shelters see an influx of pets who get spooked by the fireworks and run off. So make sure those tags on your pets are updated with your correct phone number and address. And also just keep your pets inside during the fireworks. All right, when we come back, your summer shopping guide, where to find the deals and later how to host the hottest summer get togethers. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now.
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. As you know, consumers are facing record levels of inflation, but with a new season comes a need for certain items. So what should you buy now and what should you hold off on? Here with our summer shopping guide is Mary Beth Quirk. She's a shopping editor at Consumer Reports. Welcome, Mary Beth. Thanks for being here. So you and your team at Consumer Reports, you look at what's on sale all year round mm -hmm. and you're here to tell me what we should maybe be buying right now. What right. Could, what's on sale? Yes, yeah, so our experts at Consumer Reports track prices on products, again, all year long. So June, some deep discounts we're expecting to see things like drills and pressure washers. Mm -hmm. Drills may be aimed at your DIY dad for Father's Day sales. There's going to be some things, you know, maybe you can finally put that gazebo up in the yard that yeah. dad's been claiming he's going to do. Some other things that make really good sense for summer, like blenders. I don't know who would pass up an icy drink outside. Yeah. Maybe a nice fresh smoothie. And these are expensive, so it's a good to buy them when they're on sale. Yes, it's a good idea to look for them, especially the full-size ones. Mm -hmm. You can get a personal blender. It's a little smaller, but full-size is better for making those big batches of icy drinks and things. Um, smart speakers is a good yeah. one. And popular, you know, maybe you're outside, you're inside, you're cooking at the barbecue, it's hands free. Right. Cue the music, maybe you need them to look up something for some you. Some of them are waterproof too, right? Some, some speakers are waterproof. Um, that's definitely not all. They can survive a little dunk in the pool, but you probably want to be careful okay. on those anyway. And then some other, you know, big essentials. Uh, we don't have a stroller, but strollers okay. are a good, it's a good time to buy those in June. Maybe your kid's grown up a little bit or you mm -hmm. want to get out and enjoy the weather. And then while you're enjoying that weather, of course, a staple is insect repellent and sunscreen. Um, this, of course, keeping the bugs away, yes. enough said, tick season <laughs> can be really tricky. Mm -hmm. But sunscreen is really important because it expires about every three years. So you want to pull out last year's, or maybe you haven't bought some in a while, you haven't been to the beach, and just check it, make sure right. it's not expired, and then just go stock up on it. If you can because if it's expired, it's not effective. It's not as effective. Talk to me about this. So obviously, we're seeing inflation hitting our pocketbooks every which way. Right. Are there tips you have on saving? for things that we need. So there are, the inflation's hitting a lot of people right now, a lot of summer activities, or maybe some of those hotter summer products, things that are really in demand right now, um, like air conditioners and stuff, that's gonna be a little bit harder. You just really need to plan things out and budget your purchases. Mm -hmm. You don't need to break the bank. There's plenty of times to save this summer, um, and we can get into some of some more of those as well. What are the other factors we should consider if we are trying to make a big purchase, hundreds or thousands of dollars? Right, so sure, the first thing, of course, is if you really need it right now. Mm -hmm. If something is broken, if your air conditioner broke, if your you know, large appliance broke and you can't get through to the end of the summer, you might want to go ahead and splurge on that right now. Um, but there are other sales coming up after June. Like I okay. said, we've got Father's Day coming soon. Then after June, um, the 4th of July sales is a great time for larger appliances, oh. mattresses often, and then we're expecting Prime Day. It has not been announced officially yet, but to be also in July. Yeah, usually that's in July, right? Right. And you get a lot of cookware, clothing, like other electronics and things. You might see some of these on sale well then too, but that's those are some of the times you can wait for. All right, Mary Beth Quirk with Consumer Reports. Thank you so much for our summer buying guide. We appreciate you. Well, coming up, hacks to make the most out of summer from staying cool to being the hostess with the mostess. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. All right, now that we know how to stay safe and what to buy and when to buy it, let's take things to the next level and make the most of what summer has to offer with hacks for staying cool and how to host the hottest get together. Melanie Berlier, the Spruce Group General Manager, she's, she's here now to help us maximize our summer. Okay, welcome, Melanie. I'm going to bring us over here. Start off with uh, talking to us about these products and how can they help us with our summer plans. There are so many underrated ways to beat the heat this summer. When it comes to energy efficiency, one of the simplest things you can do is swap out all of your old old bulbs oh. for the newer ones because they're more energy efficient mm -hmm. and they're not going to emit any heat throughout your home. Nice. So you save money on the bill and they're cooler. What about these devices here? The so the dehumidifier comes in handy because your air conditioning unit is working really, really hard to cool the air and remove moisture from the air. But if you have a dehumidifier oh. on site, the air conditioner isn't going to have to work as hard. Nice. Oh, I love that. Okay. And then finally, talk to us about the pillow and sheets here. Sure. So bedding is super important when it comes to your temperature control, mm -hmm. which impacts your quality of sleep. Yes. With a cooling pillow, you're actually going to remove heat from your body and get a better night's rest during like summer. that. Yeah, it's so important to sleep yeah. with a cool pillow. And at the Spruce, we recommend really lightweight, 100% cotton sheets for the summer months. Okay, excellent. All right, my family loves to be outside. We can't wait to get out there, use our backyard. Tell us about different things that we can do to stay cool, stay hydrated, and have a good time. Sure, so a DIY bar cart is one of our favorite oh, things. Oh, that's a great it's idea. So easy to do, and it's a fan favorite. So you just need, in addition to the bar cart, you need a beverage dispenser mm -hmm. to display your batch cocktail of choice. Mm -hmm. You need super durable tumblers. Forget glass outdoors, please. Yeah. It's much safer to go with a durable plastic. And then you're going to want an ice bucket. If you're feeling next level, throw some succulents on there and a bowl of lemons and limes. And staying hydrated is important, so getting a big size, getting everyone the liquids that they need. All right, Absolutely. let's talk a little bit about staying safe when you're in the sun. We talked about sunscreen earlier, and I think that's so vital. Yeah, one of our favorite things is that we recommend a sun protection station. Mm. You're going to want to include sun hats, sunglasses, and sun screen that your family members or visitors can choose from. Okay, and then finally the sun goes down, you still want the party to continue. That's kind of the most fun because then it's cooler. Yes. What are some things to help us get through the summer nights? So we love lighting, wicker lanterns, string lights are beautiful, but when it comes to insects, uh -huh. an insect yes. repelling candle is going to do double duty as both a source of warm, cozy vibes and a bug repellent. Okay, and you know what we did? We bought one of those giant outdoor fans, which really helps to keep the bugs away as well. Yes, those are a great idea too. I love this wicker lamp. All right, Melanie, what about outdoor movies? That's becoming more and more popular. Backyard movie theaters are so easy to create and they're fun for literally everyone of all ages. All you need are a screen, mm -hmm. a projector, an audio system, a content source, and a few cables and wires. <laughs> You're like, all you need are these seven things, <laughs> but they're, they're pretty affordable these days, yes? They really are, and aside from the technical Aspects, all you want to think about are food, seating, and maybe some mosquito netting. But Definitely. Everyone has fun in a backyard movie theater moment. Melanie Burley, I thank you so much. So appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right, well, that is our time for all of us here at NBC News. I'm Vicki Wynn. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. In the meantime, stay safe and cool.
Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, I, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. Cool. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my gosh, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. And I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Today, Chef Jet Tila is going to bring the heat and teach me a few tricks for an easy at home barbecue. We'll be making pulled pork sandwiches with an Asian apple slaw, plus a side of hearty cornbread. I am feeling ready to tackle this one. So let's get started. I'm so happy you're here. It's great to be here. I'm glad that you want to learn to teach me foundational stuff because I don't know anything. Have you heard? I don't buy that, Savannah. Oh. I've been watching you cook and come. you've come a long way. So what do we do? What's our plan? Right. Our plan for today is season the pork, sear the meat before braising, cut the vegetables and mix the dressing for the slaw, make and bake the cornbread, shred the pork, assemble the sandwiches, plate and serve. Our barbecue brothers are gonna get mad at us yes. for calling this barbecue. We are um, creating a version of barbecue in the house by braising. Barbecue technically is smoking something for a very long time until okay. it breaks down. Okay, no okay. smoking. Braising is, like, what does that mean, really? Very simply stated, we're gonna take a tough cut of meat mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to cook it uh, slowly with a little bit of liquid so all of the toughness breaks down. Oh, we're gonna cook the crap out of we're it. We're gonna cook the crap out of it okay. and make it delicious. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mince an onion. Ooh. Yeah, so um, I mince. I don't know if I've minced before. Have you diced? Oh, yes. It just means smaller dice. Okay. That's all it means. This is one thing I learned. Show me. When you have a round thing, do you, you gotta oh, make oh, a flat side. Oh, let me show side. you another way. So can you cut down? Yeah. But not all the way through. Okay, yes. Just I leave, can. It, leave it connected. I gotcha. Like this. Okay. You're totally killing it. I'm. My, what a sharp knife this is. <laughs> Isn't that sharp though? For yeah. Real? It does make it easier, assuming you don't cut yourself. Now we're gonna come inwards now. You see, we're gonna follow the line. To yeah. Okay. You lead with a tip down, and then and then rock. You know that rocking oh, motion? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. See how that yeah. feels? Yeah. Uh -huh, I do. You're a great cook. It's just all about believing you're a great cook. You're, you're killing it. You are a sweet talker. Nope, it's the truth. Look what you're doing. You're going to make me cry, or maybe <laughs> it's just the onion. Yeah, okay. it's definitely the onion. Definitely okay. the onion. Are these mincy enough? Those are beautifully mincy. And we're going to teach you to do a dry rub. So dry rub is basically a, a seasoning mix that yep. goes on a, a piece of beef for barbecue. We're gonna apply it to the braise. Okay. Uh, so. Brown sugar. Brown sugar, how about? Oh, you're one of those, put a piece of bread in the brown <laughs> sugar, how much? Uh, we're gonna go three, two, one, so three tablespoons. Okay. So salt, two. Okay. And again, that you can. That's a lot of salt, and this is coarse salt, I uh, see. I mean, I know it seems like a lot of salt, but it is for four pounds of pork butt. I like paprika. Mm -hmm. That was coriander. Okay. That was ground coriander. This, this is like garlic. garlic powder, yeah. yeah. The one pepper. Yeah. One pepper, yeah. You can either whisk it or stir it or whatever you want. You Look at can, that. You just made a driver, so you gotta taste everything. Even the rice. Go easy, you can go easy if you want. Oh, that's delicious. What do you think? I Isn't like that it. nice? Sweet, a little bit of um, savoriness. Nice. Then we're gonna use you <laughs> pork butt. I like to say pork behind. <laughs> you know, my mother watches this show. That's right, that's right. Yeah, you, okay. grab it, you grab it, open it. We'll talk about the actual okay. muscle. Pork yeah, booty. To, pork booty. All right, so pork let, rear end. There are so many words for that part of the anatomy. Isn't there? Um, Pork, pork tushy. The irony is it doesn't even come from that part of the pork. It doesn't? No. Well, why do we call it pork tuchus? Uh, so if you look at the shoulder here, right, of, of the four, the yeah. four end, the four inch shoulder. Two hoofs. Two here. hoofs right here. So this is, um, uh, there's two shoulders, there's two pork shoulders, mm -hmm. right? The lower part is called the picnic, which is more the upper arm, okay. right? And this is actually up here. It's the most versatile, in my opinion, uh, cut of the pork because it's got the perfect fat ratio. Mm -hmm. It's got perfect connective tissue. It's great for this. Okay. And what we're gonna do is cut it into six equal pieces. Okay, so let me take my butt right here. <laughs> <laughs> take that butt. Oh wait, we haven't had a sip. Uh, we always drink on starting from cheers. scratch. Cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. We're drinking a... Um, we have French 75. This is my wife's play on it. Um, nice. It's a hibiscus flower. So gin, honey, mm. hibiscus, and champagne. That Cheers is to you. delicious. Cheers. And to Mrs. Tila. To, uh, to all family. Yes. Yeah, those will get you in trouble. Woo! 
Super easy to drink. All right, we're liquored up. Let's get the knives and the yeah, pork out. So I'm really... just going to cut six equal yeah, pieces. Yeah, you can do it that way. You can do it this way. Well, what would three. you do? I would, I, so in my mind, I'm always thinking a, a tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. That's like my overarching guidelines. So it's a tile mm -hmm. right now, right? Okay. And the tile becomes a slice, which is only two long pieces, and then the slice becomes a dice. And look at you. You got six pieces right there. Even knife cuts are critical for even cooking. The tile becomes a slice, yep. which then becomes and a then the dice. And then the slice becomes a dice. And do it thrice. <laughs> there One, you go. One, two, three. See, look at that. Okay. And that way, um, you kind of, uh, it's a regiment mm -hmm. to, to tell yourself how to cut things. That's gorgeous. Is this though. good? Yeah, that's These perfect. guys aren't too big? Okay. Nope, not at all. I'm following your lines, but okay, this yeah. is fun. So now the spice robe, I like to kind of season in this tray. Show me your technique. I, I'll do one. So I'm like, I'm not being shy. Like I can, you can use all, all this. There's sides. one way. Here's another way to do it. Let's Here, go to I'll town. Can I ask a dumb question? There's no such thing as oh, Savannah. Sorry, another dumb question. Dumb question alert. There dumb question <laughs> alert. Well, like, could you ever, it's so tasty. Could I put it on a vegetable? A thousand percent. Okay. Is now, would fun? you like sprinkle the rest and you wouldn't you want to? Go, 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 Yeah, like go. just sprinkle. Get See? in there. Um, okay. It's about feeling your way through it. And mm -hmm. if you didn't taste that rub, yeah. you wouldn't, you'd wouldn't. be a little nervous to apply some. Right, Here. okay. Like we can wash I'm, hands. Since wash we hands. touched raw pork, yeah. I will I clear and wash hands. Raw How's pork, rub. We're okay. doing great. And I'm going to crank up uh, your Dutch oven mm -hmm. and get that going. Let's talk about braising really quick. First thing we're going to do. <laughs> All right, don't leave me hanging, girl. Here. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry. Together. I just want to celebrate every step. Perfect. Okay. Um, first step is always going to be browning your protein. Okay. Right? Um, Hot pan. This is not there. a cast iron. This is a oh, no. Dutch Say oven. It. Uh, it is. So put those two together. It is a cast iron Dutch oven. Oh, okay. How's Great. that sound? Lovely. Yeah. Um, enough oil. You can measure if you want, but I'm. I, well, you, for me today, we're going to cook by feel. Okay. I like that. Now, it's hot. Do it's, I wait for the oil to get hot and start bubbling or anything? You know, you can always wait for a little bit of white smoke. Yeah. You can actually do a test. So why don't you take a piece and kind of touch it. Mm -hmm. And if you hear the shh, we're in good shape. It's not a very wide tongue. Right? Okay. Here, Lou. You hear the shh. I hear it. I totally hear it. Now, how many, it. like, am I, is this a don't crowd the pan situation? This is cold. This is hot. It's always don't crowd a pan situation when you're browning something. Okay. Let's talk about some basics while we're waiting for the brown. Number one, uh, don't we don't mess with it. Another thing we're building, a concept of fond. Have mm. any of your chefs talked fond. about F-O-N-D, fond? No, fun, fond. but not yeah, fond. Yeah, fond. Fond is fun. Fond. It's a fabulous. What is it? Um, if you lift that piece up and we yeah. look into the pan, you see the bits that are sticking? Yes. Those are gonna become beautiful, crispy bits mm. that later we're gonna pull up and incorporate into the sauce. Okay. Think about fond as foundation of flavor. Girls just wanna have fun. That's exactly okay. right. Now, is this one of those deals That's where you gorgeous. sear on all sides? Is, is, you want and I'm gonna have to prop coverage. it up? Yep. Okay. Look at that. Look at that guy. That is now that's we're exactly what we want. Let's get the next Let's contestants up. Absolutely. Can I put it right back on I here? I totally think you can. I think that's going to be somewhat controversial out in the world. Oh, okay. But remember, team, at 165 degrees, yeah. everything is, is And sanitized. just relax, everybody. It's yeah. Chef Chet T-Live. I, like I think he that. knows what he's doing, See? okay? So don't get all worked trust up about us. it. Trust us. Trust. Don't trust me. No, but trust, trust Savannah. Him. Okay, these look good. Let's start building flavor. So okay. how about a little bit of that onion okay. first. Now you can start scraping that okay. fond. Scraping up the bits is releasing of the There fond. you go. It sounds, more, it sounds sexier, doesn't it? Release the hounds. Release the hounds. Okay. We're going to make the braising liquid now. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to do red wine. Okay. Okay. Um, and you could be any alcohol, but yeah. red wine is going to go with this kind of darker, richer braise. Okay. So whenever just, you're doing alcohol, just a really good tip, because this might be hot and it might flare. There's a small chance. So take a half step back. I like to just put the lip of the bottle here oh. and just pour away. I yeah. don't know what it is. Uh, enough cup to is. kind of coat the bottom. Like, see how we're almost at the bottom? Is that good? Now we coat the bottom. That's it. Good? Okay. See how easy that I is? I do. Okay. Yeah. And now you can scrape, use that. Now you've deglazed. You're officially deglazing. Deglazing yeah. all the day long. Once you feel this pan smooth, yes. you've done a great job releasing the font. You're done. Okay. Okay. Um, now we're going to build liquid more. Okay. All right. And uh, this is fun. Is that fun? Yeah. Cola is excellent for braising. I. We'll stand on that. So is that next? Cola? Yeah, that's next. Yeah. Crack that can okay. and give us about a half cup or a cup. The carbonation, the caramel, the sugar, the phosphates. I mean, that's so interesting. Isn't that fun? Do you think that's more? enough? Beautiful right there. How fun. Right? Um, and now... Did you I, just make that up? No, no. I use cola to braise carnitas. 
to braise uh, short ribs. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the, the flavor of, of, of the cola. Yeah. Now, all right, now we're going to add the, the pork back in, and we're going to add okay. more liquid. Okay. But we need a visual cue. We need to know okay. how much. So now, so. am I going to put all of these guys now, in Now, all here? of it goes in now. It does, Because okay. we're not worrying about crowding the pan. Mm -hmm. See the rate of boil? Yes. I want to simmer. There's hardly One any more. room for this big old That's, piece of butt. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our fundamentals of braising, liquid can never be higher than halfway up the protein. Okay. Okay, so that knowing that, we need barbecue sauce. Am I All tasting right. the barbecue sauce? I think, remember, Jet Tila says taste, taste every layer. Taste everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, taste everything. So knowing, I'll get rid of mm, it. I like that. And am I gonna stir it around so it's yeah, everywhere? Yeah, perfect right there. Do you think we're halfway up the biggest pieces of protein yet? I don't know, I don't wanna get the wrong answer, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes. I say we're almost there. Okay. Because okay, now we're gonna account for three hours of braising okay. and some reduction. Mm -hmm. So maybe a, a touch of chicken stock. Okay. A touch of chicken stock. So I don't need too much. No. The chicken stock just sort of to get us to the level we want. That's exactly right, okay. Tina. That's All exactly right. right. We're done. Okay, but don't I need to stir it up or just anything? Just a little bit, because you know what's gonna happen at 325 degrees, mm -hmm. it's gonna simmer in, in the pot. So it's. This gonna looks stir. amazing. I'd eat it right now. To I'm the oven it goes. Away. 325. I want to make sure that the uh, the brazier is in the middle of the oven. So set your rack. Oh. So when the when it's in, it's right in the middle. Okay. And then see you later, braise. Bye. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We got Smell three good. hours to kill. What should we do? Uh, I think we need to make the Asian apple slaw. Okay. Which are basically in a cook's in a cook's mind, just how to make coleslaw. Okay. But we're gonna start with a, about a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. All right. What does slaw taste like to you? Flavor, yeah. Um, like the hot, little, sour, salty, sweet, or savory. Acidy. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Like acidy. Yes. Yeah. Why don't right. we start with sweet? Okay. And again, uh, we're so gonna. So you put a little using, honey. How much? I'm gonna go two tablespoons here. Do you know your your um, your your conversions yet? How many teas into a table? Of course I don't. No big deal. We're just gonna learn one today. Okay. I think three teas to the table. Oh, you know what? I huh. never knew that, and I've always wanted to know that. There you go. So, uh, we've got soy sauce and sesame oil. Okay, that's one, a tablespoon. One each. Okay. One each. And I'm using soy sauce here because it creates salt, creates um, a little bit of umami, the mm. savoriness. If you don't want a soy sauce, go salt. Now, sesame oil, same thing, one tablespoon. One cup of rice vinegar now. Oh, We're going to work that in slowly. I'm going to get the lumps out. That's wow, dressing. That's nice. Should right. we taste it? But it's so important. Oh, I love that. Is that nice? Toasty, yummy. Oh okay. my gosh, I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you wanted more sweet, you know where to go. If you want more salt, you know where to go. Yes. Again, intuitive cooking. Chop, chop time. Uh, I'm going to start with the cabbage. Okay, this is the intimidating cabbage. We've had. We've had some issues with cabbage before. Talk to me. Oh, okay, great. Hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Yeah, tame the beast. If it's tame the beast, then it rolls around on us less. Okay, woo! If I were to think about everything as tile, slice, dice, yes. I would think this is the tile. Okay. And then what if this was the slice? Okay, I'm not sure I understand that. So but me, okay. I'm just saying like half the half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. This is the spine of the knife, mm -hmm. right? You're bunched up against a board. If you took a half step back, mm -hmm. you give yourself more room to breathe. Mm -hmm. And if you made sure that spine was flat, mm -hmm. think about perpendicular, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. always gonna have straight cuts. Oh, you're just sort of using, I'm just a, using a visual guide. Yeah, that's it. It's, a, it's a, like see. a landmarker. Okay. Julianne Apple. Julianne Apple. 
we're, we're looking for about that eighth to quarter of an inch pieces. Is this it that I'm doing these round slices? Yeah, okay. because uh, the, we're going to end up with a matchstick. Oh, so we'll okay. take that round slice, which and is then our, make little matchsticks. That's oh, it. Oh, I see. Okay. I lay them on top of each other. The stack height is totally up to your comfort level. Okay. And then what I do is lay them up, and then same thing. We're uh -huh. done with apple. Okay, good. And now we're gonna go to carrot. I flatten round things, boom, like that. Mm -hmm. And then I lay them on their flat side. Mm -hmm. Now that, oh. that keeps us from getting cut. Okay. And, and a carrot's gonna give you a lot of resistance. Tile slice dice. Tile slice that dice. That means first mark it out, then yep. slice it, then chop it up a little That's it, because. Okay, now I see what you mean. So now we can toss it, right? Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Would have been good if we had a bigger bowl though, right? <laughs> so I would do just a good pinch of salt. You mean then, salt and then turn, salt yeah, and turn. Exactly. Oh, just a good, a good thing of salt right now. Done. Okay. And then we'll turn. And then turn it. But that's not gonna make it all too salty. Like no, nope. That's more. perfect right there. Yeah, because that's why we tasted the dressing first. Yes. So we know kind of how much salt we need. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome, Savannah. Okay, this really does look good. We I think it. we can sesame now. Just um, like sprinkle. Yeah, just zhuzh, 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 and then do another toss. Okay, good? Yeah, looks okay. beautiful. Yes. So we're gonna let it chill a little bit. Chill. Yes, chill. Out. Chill. Chill. See okay. you later. Bye bye. Bye, bro. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Pull pork's braising. Yep. Oh, we're almost there. Uh, the slaw is relaxing. And then we're going to get to cornbread. I like to break it into different um, components. So we're going to okay. do dry, wet cream butter. We right? got the flour. Yeah, so why don't you throw cup of in a um, cup of cornmeal. Yeah. Here you do want to measure. Yes. Right? And That's one thing I do know from baking. Yeah. You kind of have to be on it. Okay. There you go. Four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Um, you got it. And okay. I usually consider um, salt a dry... Uh, uh, yeah, I would. But here's a good tip. Like, usually when you're creaming butter, uh, sugar's not a dry. Like your cookie recipe. Sugar right? goes with the liquids. There it is. Okay. One teaspoon kosher salt. Okay, these it. are dry. Whisk them. Let's whisk them together. Okay. Now, you're going to do the wets now mm -hmm. in uh, that large measuring bowl. Okay, and so. You're going to start with eggs. And one thing I learned is you don't do it on the edge. Yes. So that was one thing. Look at you, man. Mm -hmm. You got this. Now, I did yeah. learn on one show how to do the one hand crack. Should okay, I try save, it? Do that, do the, save the last one, please, okay. for one hand. But it's a real messy situation. It's not really. Yeah. Second hand got in there late. Okay, so work in progress. So let's whisk up those eggs okay. until uh, mm -hmm. totally together where you can't tell if it's white or if it's yolk. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. And then I'm going to fly in your milk. Okay. There it is. One and two thirds cup. Mm -hmm. Pour it right in. Pour it right in. Whisk that together. Okay. And you've basically separated your dries. Mm -hmm. You've got your wets. And I'm gonna bring in the mixer to cream butter. Have you creamed butter? I have not. Okay, this is important. This is a really good concept okay, to learn. Okay, so is this done enough? That's good. lovely. Okay. We'll put it to the side. Oh, I love the mixer. Okay, creaming 
butter. Yes. Uh, oh, first, do we need to get acclimated with mixer? I actually know this mixer. Okay, good. I have this mixer. Okay. We're gonna go to the paddle. paddle. It says 12 tablespoons of butter. That's one and a half sticks. Yep, so yeah. save us half a stick for, for, for greasing the dish. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I see this is room temp butter. Yeah, which is really important, team, mm -hmm. that you can't cream butter that's okay. at room temp. Then we need now a cup of sugar. sugar. Yep, okay. a cup of sugar. Low so, first. Low. What we're doing here is using the sugar, mm -hmm. because it's coarse, to whip air into the butter. Okay. That's all we're doing. This is gonna give you a really light, fluffy Fluffy, cornbread. okay. That's period, so now you go higher. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is color. Oh. It's a pale yellow. Uh, it's gonna start to become one fluffy, beautiful mass. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna get even more pale. Now, I can get obsessive about pushing stuff down Which, on the side, should thank, I? Thank you for mentioning it, because it's so important. So let's turn it off mm -hmm. every so often, scrape mm -hmm. down. Scrape down, okay, good. So it's good to be a freak about this? It's totally, when it comes to okay. baking, yeah. when it comes to cooking, absolutely. I do, All so right. now I'm going in We're whipping and again. I'm gonna go straight up to fast, right? Yep, that's it, you're doing it. We could take this time and grease our baking dish. Okay, now I'm like, maybe I should just do this. Done. See, what we're gonna do now is work the batter together by alternating dries and wet. Well, okay, so to do a little dry, a little wet. Yeah, maybe a third at a time. Okay, okay here we go. And now we're gonna do this a little. Slow, nice and really slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't want to bit it all in my face. That would be fun though. Now add a little. Add about a third. See how it just comes together? Now mm -hmm. stop, we'll go alternate oh, okay. back to. Yeah, the whole idea here is good incorporation mm -hmm. without over mixing. Okay. Uh, flour, when over mixed, will create gluten. Gluten will give you a very tight crumb, okay. and we don't want a tight crumb. Never so. want a tight crumb. Boo! Boo tight crumbs. Or a little this much. Yep, and like you can go what? a little more now. So. Like that? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Should I be spatula Uh I think is this is a good time to maybe stop and give it a scrape down. Yeah, I think so. I have a scrape thing here. It's not as bad, yeah. though, because it's liquidy. It's You're doing still. it. Okay. And I think we're at the point now that we're a third. You can just dump, dump it all in. in there. Yeah, for sure. So we're at that point where the batter can handle kind of the rest of the ingredients. Okay. No problem. How do you know that? Uh, I'm looking at the mass it's become, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's stable. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm looking for. There you go. So How would you get into cooking anyway? My family immigrated in the 60s. We had restaurants in China. So our grandparents had restaurants, parents had restaurants. There was really it's nowhere in, else for me to go. It's in your jeans. Yeah, it's, it's called not being good at school. No, did you grow up cooking? Yeah, so I worked in our grocery stores as a butcher, as wow. a produce guy. Oh my gosh, that's how you know so much. So I did it all. Get in there and let's get all, okay. all kind of the... Just make sure I really yeah, got it mixed really in Really well. kind of a, like use that blade and almost fold. There okay. you go. And now I'm just going to pour it in. Do you have that's any all. pouring techniques? Um, you know, not really. Okay. I, I, I don't. I just try to kind of cover and then tap, tap, tap. Mm -hmm. And if you're one of those people like chunky cornbread, mm -hmm. like jalapenos yeah. or corn, uh, this is kind of right before we pump, go into the pan. You, mm -hmm. can, you can incorporate all your, Besides what would you put in? I would Bacon. Yum. <laughs> Oven wise, yes. 400 degrees, okay. 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. After 20, about 20 minutes, I would check with the little uh, cake checker. Yeah. And we've done it. Shall I bake? Let's do it. Well, let's do it. Savannah, we've done so much. Oh my gosh. The slaw is ready to go. We got the cornbread. I think it's time to pull out like the brioche buns and start to build lunch. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go check on the pork. Okay. I'll bring it over. And then here we go. Wow. Woo! That looks awesome. It looks incredible. Oh man. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're gonna shred. Right. Shred, okay. Yeah, do you allow, yeah, And I'm cool. putting on my plate. Just put it right on your sheet pan okay. there. All of them are, you take three, I'll take three. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Oh, geez, it's falling apart. Yeah, isn't that, well, first, is that a good thing? let's just enjoy how how I mean, soft and tender it is. that is. Oh my gosh, it's like melting your mouth. Man, this is, this is what braising does. It okay. takes a tough piece of meat and turns it into something that feels and tastes really expensive. Okay. Uh, okay, lots of options here. The double fork thing. It's showing. So weird. It's literally just shredding, okay. and oh uh, it's personal preference. I like kind of a, a chunkier pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Allie likes kind of a very fine pulled pork. Okay. So that's that's house rules. What okay. I call house rules. So what is Savannah's house? house rules? The house rules are what Allie says. Yeah, yeah. There Whatever you go. Whatever your wife says, I, I agree with. I just want to eat it right now. <laughs> just oh really? Savannah? Put a bib because on. I have your box of spoons. Oh. oh yeah. Okay, love it. All right, I get to taste it. Yeah. You have to taste every layer because okay. it's gonna it's gonna morph a little bit. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes. Really good. 
Mm-hmm. All right. I like it. So once it's shredded, mm -hmm. um, do you mind putting that barbecue sauce oh, yeah. into all this delicious kind of pan sauce? This made? whole thing? The whole thing goes okay. in. Mm -hmm. I'm just stirring it up, right? You're stirring it up. And then we're going to marry uh, the pork back into the sauce. So it gets almost like another basting. I Great. can't believe I made this. What are you talking about? It looks so good. You killed. Okay. Savannah, pulled pork is ready. I'm going to go get the cornbread. cornbread. All right, yeah. here we go. I'm going to drink. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. Save me some. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. That is pretty. I'm going to put it on your trivet. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. You can let this cool in the pan. You yeah. can eat it warm. You could flip it out and let it cool and get crispy edges, whatever okay. you want to do. But for today, I think we're just going to serve it as a side. So do you want to carefully take that butter knife and then cut it into squares? Yeah, should I? Yeah. Dial, yeah. tile slice dice. You go, girl. Yeah, and if you don't mind placing it in this uh, yeah. tin. And we've made honey butter, mm. which is basically room temperature butter. Yeah. Swirled honey in there and a little bit of flake sea salt I mean, on top. Sounds delicious. It's easy to make things fancy. Should we taste? Yeah, we're, you always we have to taste everything. Yeah, we here. don't need spoons for this one. No, here, I'll give you a little Thank bite. Thank you very much. Thank there you. you go. I'm mm -hmm. So good at that. Look at that. Look at the crumb. I mean, the crumb. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the no crust. Gluten there. What? No, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What's gluten? Mm. No gluten. Mm, it tastes delicious. Mm. Shall we build? Yes. Okay, so here is the slaw that you made. Okay. Here is, this is a brioche bun. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to do a little bit of uh, sauce. You can go really big if you want. I'm gonna yeah. go manageable today. Me too. Okay. We have to eat on TV, so we don't wanna be like. <laughs> exactly. Okay, right. so you do that. And we'll just do some slaw on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do you barbecue sauce the top layer uh, or no? Yeah, I totally would. Why I... not? Okay, yummy. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Making a sandwich, that is something I mm. know how to do. All right, Savannah, look These what look we good. did. That looks excellent. Load them up. Load them up. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to the table and, and, and kind of recap and eat lunch. Okay. All right, you got this. You want to me give you this? I'll grab this. Okay. Okay. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Oh, here we go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Pulled pork, slaw, cornbread. I mean, this is a perfect summer meal. It really is. Um, also, a lot of techniques to take with you. Yeah, for right. sure. Braising. I mean, that was incredible. Good. Okay, but let's see. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Mm, I'm, I'm sorry with liquid food. I'm oh, yeah, sorry, exactly. But... I, I can relate. <sighs> you hit me with the piece of cornbread. I got you. Oh, I got to try some of that butter, you too. absolutely do. This is my favorite. Really easy to kind of fancy mm -hmm. up. So good. Mm. This cornbread melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh, man, that, that when you cream that butter, man, it just really lightens up. Mm. Tell Allie I like her cocktail, too. Mm, I will. She's invited over. <laughs> this is delicious. Not good? Mm -hmm. I like these plates because they're, well, it's a messy kind of, it's like a trough. We need some of those wet towels. <laughs> I'm yeah. into that. Um, you know, it's very barbecue inspired, right? Yeah. And these are really inexpensive. Anyone can go to a restaurant supply store. I uh, get what, what these are called, like eighth sheet pans mm -hmm. or quarter sheet pans. Uh, you get some fancy decoration, and it's really just tiny little moments mm -hmm. that, that turn your dinner parties into something fancy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how good that is. 
Mm. And you don't have to make a sandwich out of it. You could have just done some coleslaw, some chips, eat it with a fork. That's the whole idea here is like mm -hmm. you have a little barbecue lunch without smoking things for 12 hours. Yeah. And the pork is savory, it's sweet, it's kind of luscious, the slaw with the acid. It's really a knockout combination. It's all working. Yum. Jet. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You are a very patient teacher. No way, you're an it. outstanding cook. Mm. Thanks, Savannah. Cheers to us. Cheers to us. Welcome to Shop Today. From my current obsessions in Itlis to a roundup of favorites for an instant refresh, we bring you the hottest products and the best tips for how to use them. Plus, I sit down with the biggest names in the business and shop the stars. It's just perfect. And share the trending products that are worth the hype and buzzworthy. We've got it all, including the latest technology so you can shop right with us with just a click. All this and more only on Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. Welcome to Shop Today. I'm so excited to officially kick off summer with everything you need for the ultimate bash. Whether you're the party goer or the party thrower, this season it's all about reconnecting with those we love and celebrating again. With my own wedding just around the corner, I'm so excited to share the most special items for both big events and small get-togethers. Plus, because it's me, of course, there will be exclusive deals throughout the show, some up to 80% off retail. They will be sprinkled throughout each segment, so be sure to watch them all for some amazing discounts. All right, let's get this party started with my it list of ultimate bash must-haves. And remember, you can shop right along with us by scanning that QR code on your screen. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. First up, let's go inside my beauty bag and start with your go-to party look. This Bounce Magic Fit Creamy Bronzer and Highlighter Duo from Beauty Blender does literally the most. It's a bronzer and highlighter in one, perfect for that quick touch-up or build it for a bolder nighttime look. The set includes a clean velvet matte bronzer and gel cream highlighter and comes in many different shades so you can find the perfect one for your skin tone. Dab the bronzer under your cheekbones and apply the highlighter to the high points of your face for that flawless finish. The Magic Fit Creamy Bronzer and Highlighter Duo from Beauty Blender retails for $32. Now that we've got the foundation for a party look covered, let's move on to your eyes. Throwing on a quick coat of mascara makes such an instant difference. I'm in love with this one from Huda Beauty, and it's sure to become your summer go-to. The Legit Lashes Double-Ended Volumizing and Lengthening Mascara has dual-sided brushes. One for volume, the other side you use for curl. And get this, it retails for less than $30. Another two and one. Moving on to accessories. Such a good time to try out a new accessory and add a fun pop of color to your outfit. And the Viva Joya Resin Ring Set is perfect for that, so on trend now. The set is less than $15 and comes with 24 pieces. Plus, they're so cute. One set has eight different styles, including cuff rings, square rings, stackable rings, and more. Perfect so you can keep a few for yourself and gift the others to your friends and family. I love the cute pastel colors like the adorable green and light blue. And these rings are sure to spruce up any simple outfit. The ring set retails for $14.99. So much fun. Next up, we have our first exclusive deal for the show. Check out these earrings from Golden Thread. Gold earrings are such a big trend right now. Opt for the classic hoop earring or have fun with a stud. We have the moon and star studs, star crawler, golden butterfly, plus layering of course is in. You could wear the studs and hoops together and with this deal, you won't break the bank. These earrings are 14 karat gold filled, the perfect addition to any outfit. Plus the brand says the earrings are all waterproof and tarnish free, so you could wear them from the pool to the party or to the pool party. The golden thread earrings retail from 80 to 125, but today we have an exclusive deal for Shop Today viewers starting at just $22 for a pair. That's up to 80% off. You don't want to miss it. Scan the QR code below. 
Next on my it list, the knotted woven handbag. These bags you've seen everywhere. They're so in right now in bright colors, or you could go with the classic black or white. Add a special touch to any outfit, and the woven look keeps the bag casual enough to go from day to night. This bag comes in sizes medium or large. Toss it over your shoulder, carry it as a handbag. Imagine just wearing a simple black dress and this bright green pop. The knotted woven handbag retails for less than $30. Let's talk footwear. Party shoes are a must. And these sandals from Shoots are the perfect pick to elevate any outfit. The Taina vinyl and leather sandal combines a 90s inspired mule with trendy vinyl straps. These heels have a square toe and a two and a half inch heel, so they'll add a bit of height, plus the neutral color matches any outfit. The sandals retail for $118. Scan the QR code to get your pair. We're always looking for problem solvers here, and today we have an amazing one. Meet the hot heels from Hollywood Fashion Secrets. The brand is known for their fashion tape, and now they have a solution for your feet, too. The brand says the Hot Heels foot spray soothes aches and pains from uncomfortable shoes by soothing sore toes and aching arches. You can spray it onto your bare skin or even directly onto your stockings. The spray is light and dries quickly. This set includes a full-size bottle for home, a mini bottle for on the go, and as we all adjust back to wearing heels again, this is a great buy and a must have. The beauty hack goes for just $18. Lastly, if you wanna ditch the heels for the night or have a more casual event, these sneakers from Veja are getting a ton of buzz on social. And you can see why, because they're a classic style that still stands out. The sneakers from Veja come in multiple styles like classic, retro, high top, metallic, and men's. A good sneaker is such a wardrobe staple. These adorable sneakers start at $100. Well, that wraps up my it list for the ultimate bash. Let's run through these amazing products one more time. We have the bronzer and highlighter duo from Beauty Blender, the mascara from Huda Beauty, the resin ring set, the earrings from Golden Thread, the knotted woven handbag, the sandals from Shoots, the hot heels from Hollywood Fashion Secrets, and the Veja sneakers. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all the items you'll see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. And just so you know, today may make a commission for purchases made through the QR codes or links on today.com. Coming up, we're bringing you my go-to picks for instantly refreshing your home and kitchen for epic parties. And later, I sit down with the incredible Adina Menzel to talk about her new fashion line, her favorite looks, even a few dance moves. You do not want to miss that. All of that and more coming up only on Shop Today. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Welcome back to Shop Today. Well, when it comes to a party, sometimes it's the simple things that really pack that extra punch. 
Whether it's something for your table or some spruced up decor pieces, there's a lot you can do to give your bash an instant refresh. I've rounded up some of my favorite finds that will bring your get together to the next level. Let's get started with beautiful and fun dishes that will give your tablescape a festive summer vibe. The Zach Design Summer Print Dinnerware sets are so colorful. There are multiple seasonal designs to choose from and each set consists of 12 pieces, including four dinner plates, four salad plates, and four bowls. The brand says they are break resistant and they are perfect for indoor and outdoor use. I use these all the time. Plus, they're dishwasher safe, so cleanup is easy. The set goes for $48. 89 and they really just give the table such a pop. Next up, another great product for any host or as a gift. This one is a special deal just for our Shop Today viewers. Check out these designer cocktail napkins and guest towels from the stationery studio. The napkins come in seven color combinations and feature a variety of designs and phrases. They are also perfect for drinks, appetizers, or desserts, and the guest towels are three-ply with 10 color options and great for bathrooms or buffets. Both come in sets of 100 and a great way to add color. The retail, 70 to 75, the deal, 35 to 37.50. That's 50% off. Now that you've got your dinnerware and napkins, you'll need servingware and utensils too. Check this out. We've got another great deal just for you. Bon Vivant Designs has wonderful kitchen items. The Agate and Bamboo Kitchen Utensil Set, Agate Top Bamboo Cheese Server Set, and Bamboo and Agate Three-Piece Wine Tool Set. These are hosting essentials that come in three beautiful color stones, pink, blue, and natural, and each stone is unique. The cheese server set includes a cheese fork, a flat knife, and a small spade. I mean, just look how gorgeous these are. The wine set includes a corkscrew, bottle opener, and a knife with bamboo handle. It also comes with a wine pourer and a removable bamboo stopper. The retail for these sets, 56 to 64. The deal, 28 to 32, that's 50% off. I would stock up on these for yourself and as gifts. This next item helps bring some fun to your glass. The Drinks Plinks Silicone Ice Molds add pizzazz to your pitcher. Made of food grade silicone, you can chill your drink in fun ice shapes like hearts, pyramids, hexagons, or order the initial of your guest of honor. Here's a fun hack. You can use them to make iced coffee or iced tea cubes too, so your drinks never get diluted. Check them out starting at $18. Now that you're set with keeping your beverage icy cold, let's give you somewhere to put it. Check out the Funboy Inflatable Floating Drink Station. Take your drink poolside with room for four cups or cans. The Floating Drink Station goes for $24. While you're having some fun in the sun this summer, don't forget to keep cool too. Check out how much fun this next item is. The Giant Rainbow Sprinkler from Urban Outfitters is truly fun for the whole family. All you do is attach any standard hose and then the fun archway jets spray in all directions. The kids and kids at heart will love this so much. So grab your swimsuit and enjoy all the summer fun. It goes for just $50. Finally, as the sun goes down, light up the summer night with these Bright Town outdoor string lights. They are a huge fan favorite, starting at $16.95 for 25 feet of lights. They are great for hanging on your porch or add for party decor. They really transform a space and make it feel so special and festive. Well, that wraps up our instant refresh. And now that you are all set to give your backyard bash a boost, let's go through the products one more time. The summer print dinnerware sets, by Zach Designs, the Stationery Studio Designer Cocktail Napkins and Guest Towels, the Bon Vivant Designs Bamboo and Agate Sets, the Drinks Plank Silicone Ice Molds, the Fun Boy Inflatable Floating Drink Station, the Giant Rainbow Sprinkler from Urban Outfitters, and the Bright Town Outdoor String Lights. To shop these fun products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all of the items you'll see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. Coming up next, we catch up with Broadway star Adina Menzel to chat all things life, love, and of course, letting it go. And later, stick around because we're sharing my favorite buzzworthy items that are sure to be an instant hit at your next bash. All that and more coming up only on Chop Today.
to cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Jackson now weekdays at 5 on NBC News now we'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time when you were still in Kiev could you hear the bombing my name is Lester hey, who's this for breaking news in our changing world download the NBC News app to cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Shop Today. This episode is all about throwing the ultimate summer bash and sharing good times together. Well, I sat down with the queen of good times herself, the very talented award-winning actress and singer, Adina Menzel. She's used to being in the spotlight with starring roles in shows like Rent, Wicked, and Frozen. And now she's sharing a new passion, fashion. We caught up with her about her new clothing line, her career, and her very exciting new role. Take a look. We have a lot in common. I was a motivational dancer growing up. I was playing singing and you were dancing. Yeah. yeah. So you too were a motivational person at events. Well, I wasn't up. very motivating because I had an attitude. I, I think I... I wanted to move on and get my big break. If you had looked back then and then fast yeah. forwarded, like to where you are now I know. and sitting here and where you are, it's, it's interesting, right? Where I grew up, I grew up in Long Island. I went to NYU. Broadway is my bread and butter. butter. Um, so now I live in LA most of the time. So when I come back here, it's, it's just, there's a lot of emotions. Like, What does it feel like when you walk around or by Broadway energetically? Well, sometimes I feel a little sad because I'd like to be here more. I walk around just missing some of my friends. I love the community of theater. Your, your demo is very wide because you have these young... I have little girls and boys. I have moms who've grown up with me through Rent, Rent and Wicked and, and now Frozen, they have their kids. How many times do you think you've sang Let It Go or people have asked you to sing it? It's a lot. But I, I don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It's one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. I love it. What a gift to be able to connect with little kids, a young audience all the time, you know, um, in that way. It's just the messaging of the song is so important. You know, it's not just a kind of thin pop song. It's a song about really finding your power and celebrating who you are. At any age, okay. those powerful three words. But the funny thing to me that you bring it up, Let It Go feels like it's like, let it go, like get over it, you know? But the song, Let It Go, is about let your power go, release it into the world, your magic. It's interesting. I don't think people really have analyzed it enough. Yeah, but it's for every, really every person if you analyze it. Yeah. I think the parents are just sick of me by now, so like, please don't let me think about this. <laughs> I, I, a lot of people have that song in their head. And Frozen 3, is that a thing? I hope so. <laughs> Uh, I hope it is, but I don't know. But you're ready to break out, let it go if they need you. Anytime I can I can be 80 and play a blonde animated girl who's like 15, who's got amazing arms, by the way. I love that about her. <laughs> you had mentioned that Wicked, the movie, is coming out, uh -huh. and that you were like, 
What am I doing in that movie now? I'm pretty transparent, so I'm not doing a great job of going like, yes, I wish them all the best. <laughs> I do wish them the best, and it will be an amazing movie. And the two women, Ariana and Cynthia, are friends of mine, and they're gonna be incredible. But to pretend like it doesn't hurt that, first of all, I'm probably, I'm just too old to play it, so I have to, I have to come to terms with that, which is hard, and just letting that go is really, it's hard when you create something and then you don't get to see it all the way through. Would you have wanted to do that? Yeah, I was like, look, if I look a little old, you slap that green makeup on, you cover up a couple things, you put a little Vaseline on the lens, I look amazing. That's the honest answer. It's hard getting older and to acknowledge that I totally understand. I feel really conflicted about it because I know I'm better, I know I'm wiser, I know I'm a better mother having had a son later in my life. I know how all the things I have to offer and I know the things I've accomplished and yet I have those days where I look in the mirror and I see the age. We're about the same age and as we get older, it's like you never think it's going to happen to you but you really design the line not only based on your insecurities, because we all have insecurities, uh -huh. but for the woman who appreciates aging and wants to be stylish. I wanted the line to really be reflective of the things that I care about. And I got some great layering pieces, you know, because I just want to do a little coverage. And the fabrication is really important. So I know it was important to you for it to be super soft yeah, and yummy. It has to be, I didn't want to feel like the fashion is wearing me, you know? I'm lucky to have someone come in and do my hair for this interview and take two hours. But on my normal life, leave me to my own devices. I'm kind of, I can be a mess, you know? And yeah. so I just, I want stuff that just feels good and I feel comfortable and I want people to feel like, you know, that they shine in the clothes, that it's not some crazy design that's, that's overshadowing us, you know? We have so much to offer. What? What does Encore mean? And why did you choose that name? An Encore is when you've completed your show and people go, Encore, Encore, because <laughs> they want more. And it's just a wonderful feeling. It's a feeling of acceptance and love for who I am as an artist. And I wanted to sort of imbue that feeling to all of the other people out there and have them feel that way when it's really about enhancing who they are and letting them enjoy a spotlight. My signature piece, which was sort of the genesis of the whole line, which I drew on a little napkin one day and doodled, I wanted to find this this jumpsuit, like a onesie that you could wear to bed that felt super soft and you could wake up and throw on different shoes and go throughout the day and you feel great. So I'm calling it the swing jumpsuit because um, for anyone who doesn't know, in the theater, the swing. I didn't know which direction you were going there. So <laughs> we were going the swing like that. The swing is the most respected person in the theater. They are the person that learns all of the roles. They dance, act, do everything and they know every track and they're on a moment's notice, they're ready to step in for anybody and they can play all of those roles and I've always just admired them so much. If you had a go-to party outfit, what would it be? The jumpsuits. Those you could dress up with a heel and some great jewelry and wear them out. So that's what I would do. Something that you felt good dancing in. I'm not a great dancer. You're not a great dancer? No. People, when they call, they say she's a triple threat. A triple threat means that you, you're you a great singer, dancer, and actor. And I need tutoring whenever I have to dance. They put me in another room with the assistant choreographer and have to spend days teaching me eight counts that everyone learns in three seconds. Exactly. Yeah, my brain just, I don't know. No, 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 do you have a move? Is like there one move that you no. know? Yeah, it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I date myself. I could do the moonwalk, actually. But I guess when you get out of here, we could have you moonwalk out of here. That's hysterical. I Let's I can see what you're this will be the tease of all teases. Whoa! I mean, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> You've done so many roles. Is there one that you'd like to revisit? Um, it's really hard to, to think that way. You kind of like live in them and love them and then move on from them. So I learned so much from Wicked, um, from Elphaba because I really need to learn how to step into my own power at that point in my life. So every day I was mirroring what the character was going through. But I would probably just say the role I'm, I love the most is being a mom. Yes! And you still get to do that. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thanks so much to Adina. That was such an honest and inspiring conversation, wasn't it? To shop her items and see more of Adina's line, scan the QR code below or head to today.com slash shop all day. And we should mention Adina is a paid spokesperson for QVC, where I also have a line. 
Coming up next, my favorite buzzworthy products, including some nostalgic nods that are sure to make your party a hit. All that and more coming up only on Shop Today. From New Orleans, nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Welcome back to Shop Today. This is one of my favorite segments because today we're celebrating the ultimate summer bash and we've got the buzziest finds to help you make a splash this season. First up, it's not a party without party food, right? And bringing back old trends is on trend right now. So we've got some delicious sweet treats that will bring you right back down memory lane. Remember snow cones? This vintage countertop snow cone maker is such a great way for kids and adults to enjoy a cold summer treat it also includes two reusable plastic snow cone holders along with an ice scoop to easily serve them. It retails for $59.99 and comes in blue, pink, red, or white. This is sure to be a hit at your next get together. The next item that is a must have, another fun party treat, Nostalgia Classic Retro Countertop Cotton Candy Maker. Make your own fluffy cotton candy in just minutes. The cotton candy maker comes in aqua and retails for $49.99. And bonus, for both these treats, ingredient kits are also available. So check those out so you're ready to go. Next up, another exclusive deal only for Shop Today viewers. Keep your guests entertained and also hydrated with the Aduro Amplify Chill LED Light Show Ice Bucket Speaker. It's fun and functional. The ice bucket will help you beat the heat and the speaker with integrated Bluetooth connection will bring the beats. Use your phone to change the color of the ice bucket, a personalized light show right in your backyard. It retails for $99.99. The deal is $35, that's 65% off. Speaking of party drinks, check out this cool coffee option for your caffeine loving company. New Range Coffee Black Cold Brew, Cold Brew Coffee Plus, and Cold Brew Latte Cans are a great individual way to keep the party going when you need a little kick. Plus, they look cute too. The Black Cold Brew is a Guatemalan dark roast and the Cold Brew Coffee Plus has a chocolatey smooth flavor. The Cold Brew Latte is vegan with a coconut cream infused coffee. Get 12 cans of each variety for $48 or subscribe and save 15%. Now that you have coffee on the menu, why not go a step further and make an on-trend espresso martini with these Libby Cosmopolitan Martini Party Glasses. You could also elevate your appetizers or desserts by serving them in these cute glasses. Plus, the brand says they are dishwasher safe. I just love easy party cleanup. And get this, they are sold in a set of 12 for $32. Well, that's it for my buzzworthy party picks. Let's recap the fun one more time. We have the Nostalgia Vintage Countertop Snow Cone Maker and Cotton Candy Maker, the Aduro Amplify Chill LED Light Show Ice Bucket Speaker, the New Range Coffee and Latte Cans, and the Libby Cosmopolitan Martini Party Glasses. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all of my party picks. Featured on today's show, you can also text SHOP 
to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. And that wraps up this episode of Shop Today. I can't believe it's over, but I loved shopping and celebrating the ultimate summer bash with all of you. I want to send an extra special thank you to the talented Adina Menzel for sharing her fun film and Broadway memories. And who could forget those killer dance moves? I hope you found great ways to enhance your summer and make your own special memories celebrating with the ones you love. I hope you'll tune in later this summer for incredible deals and items you need for the perfect fall season. You won't want to miss these products or the exclusive deals. Until then, wishing you all a very happy and healthy summer. See you next time. So this is not your normal office. You, you, you bought, you're, you're leasing the this place. This is my office, actually. <laughs> I had you, had you in. This is your staff? Yeah. <laughs> we joked when you walked in, John, that this was like a deposition. Yeah. Are you a little nervous right I'm now? I'm very nervous, know? yeah. I, I, I expect to be sued any moment. Or, <laughs> where's the subpoena? <laughs> You've been in a few rooms like this in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never a good thing, is it, to be on the other side of the table from a panel that's... No, when you have three lawyers on the other side and they're... Uh, they're all frowning at you and they're trying to, you know, get under your skin and make you say something you don't want to say or make you, you know, that's, that's not, that's not a good way to spend your time. I don't, I don't, I've done that a couple times, but I, I don't, I don't want to get sued. I've been yeah. sued a lot and you have to deal with it. You know, you, you, they're all frivolous. I've never paid a dime in damages. Uh, but just dealing with the, uh, the negative energy of a yeah. lawsuit. And it's for a guy who claims he came up with the idea for the firm or the Pelican Brief. and Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We That's, still get those letters. Yeah. I did one nonfiction book, The Innocent Man, yeah. and I got sued four times for that one. All frivolous. We won all four of them. But it took two years to get rid of them. Yeah. And you start paying lawyers huh. to sit around tables like this, and they're not cheap, you know. So I would prefer to avoid litigation. Okay, let's do that. So that's the last we will speak of litigation. <laughs> we are fun done. To talk, fun to talk about. We are done. There, there are here. no pending suits right now. <laughs> Maybe that's why you got out of the law and got into this stuff, right? A lot, a lot of reasons. Writing books. A lot of reasons. Books. Sparring Partners is a novella, which is new for you, John. There are three stories, about mm. 125, something like that, pages, each of them. Why did you decide to take that approach this time? The stories, all three stories have been around for a while. And uh, I keep a lot of stories. And my, my usual novel is about 400 pages. That's what yeah. I like to read. These were not quite that long. There was not, not quite enough characters or action or plot in these three stories. So in an effort to get the, books, the stories published, and I love the stories, so let's, let's publish them as three novellas. One of them takes place in three hours, mm. Kid on Death Row. Yeah. They're just stories that have been around. And it's time to publish them. One of the stories in here, Strawberry Moon, is you mentioned it, it takes place over the course of a few hours, guy on death row. Wow. And I note that it ties into the work you do in your life as well with the Innocence Project and something that's important to you. Um, what did you want to say in that story in Sparring Partners? Up until about 10 or 12 years ago, the Supreme Court finally ruled that you cannot put minors on trial for capital murder. It's not fair. And the Supreme Court finally said, uh, stop it. Uh, in this story, the kid went, on, went, to, he went to trial at the age of 14, I think, for capital murder. He's found guilty. He's been on death row for 15 years. He's going to be executed at the age of 29, which is very young for a death row inmate to be, to be killed. So the first issue is trying minors for capital crimes. The second one is, uh, in this story, the kid didn't kill anybody. He never pulled a trigger. He was an accomplice. His brother pulled the trigger. And the point is, uh, just because you're an accomplice do doesn't mean you should be executed. You should be punished severely. But he never pulled the trigger. He didn't kill anybody. And that law is, that's not the law in every state, but in the majority of states. So I, I touched on the law a little bit there. But, but also, I've, I've been to death row in like six states. And those are not always fun visits. And I'm kind of fascinated by, by those stories and what an inmate goes through in the final few hours and, and how they go about it, how the state goes about it, and the last minute appeals and the last minute, the last meal, the last words. You know, we're, we're, we're rapidly approaching the point in this country where the death penalty is dying. 
Uh, there's so few executions now. There's so, there's so few death verdicts from juries. Uh, it will eventually go away. You Not, think so? It'll go away? Yeah, well, uh, in most places. Virginia yeah. abolished it two years ago, became the first southern state to do so in many years. What's happening is um, it's just juries, juries just don't want to do it. Juries get to see the whole picture now. They get to see uh, the horrible crime that, that deserves severe punishment. They also get to see the defendant and where he came from and what his, how he reached that point. And, and so there's more sympathy now for, for someone who was raised like that. And so juries nowadays are much more willing to go life without parole, without killing the person. Your work with the Innocence Project, I gather, is nearly as meaningful to you as writing a best-selling book. How important is that work to you? Well, it's very important because I never knew there was a problem. Even as a small town criminal defense lawyer, uh, I never had a client I thought was wrongfully convicted or, or mistreated. I, I was naive. When I wrote The Innocent Man and I had to research the issue, I realized that there are tens of thousands of innocent people in prison. And most people don't believe that, uh, but it's true. And we're trying to get them out one at a time. I'm pen pals with some guys uh, in prison. Uh, still, uh, one guy in Oklahoma has been there for 35 years, and um, we're trying to get him out, completely innocent, and uh, it's heartbreaking. It's, those, sto those stories stay with me. And as a storyteller, uh, they are fascinating stories because of the amount of uh, injustice, suffering. Any, anywhere you have great suffering, you have great fiction. But the wrongful convictions are exonerations. The ultimate uh, triumph after 30 years of walking out of prison uh, and being able to survive in the world and while somebody else was roaming free, while the real rapist or the real killer was out there. Uh, it's, it's very gratifying, but it's also uh, bittersweet because it happened and it could have been prevented initially. Sweet because you're getting the guy out after a long time. Uh, but the work is um, it's pretty addictive. And a lot of times it's because the guy or the woman didn't have money to hire a lawyer who could prevent him from going in there for 30 years. It's all so much socioeconomic undercurrent to you all see, those cases. You don't, you don't see any rich people on death row. Yeah. And, uh, and oftentimes uh, bad lawyering is a, is a cause of the wrongful, wrongful conviction. We try, to, we try to fight for better legal representation for people charged with serious crimes. We, we all believe in a fair trial. We, we are, we're Americans, let's have a fair trial. Let's, uh, let's have a trial, let's make it fair. Uh, but they're rarely fair because the state has all the resources. We fight to provide adequate representation for, for our clients. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Ali Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You are so fluent in the language of not only the law, but the shady side of the law. I'm not suggesting you were shady as an attorney, John, but did you see something along the way that you sort of stored away and said, these are the kind of characters I'm gonna write about? 
somewhere in your legal career or just observing oh, sure. lawyers? Oh, sure. I, I watch lawyers, and, uh, and they're fascinating. I always have. Uh, small town guys, big firm guys are really uh, intriguing. The conflicts, the bad behavior, the law firms that blow up, the conflicts of interest. The uh, lawyers are always doing things that, um, that are hard to believe. And I, I've said a thousand times, most lawyers are honest, hardworking people who don't make a lot of money. They're boring. Nobody wants to read about that, okay? You want to read about the guy who cracks up and does something really crazy. And that's what's fun to write about and fun to read about. Jake is my favorite, you know, in, in, from, from Ford County. And I hope I go back there one day with Jake again to tell another courtroom drama. I love the courtroom as a spectator, <laughs> not as a defendant. <laughs> I like to, to write about um, courtroom dramas and the intrigue and the jury deliberations and the judges and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's, where, that's my world. That's where I like to live. Still, after 40 books, I still enjoy it. So fun for your fans to see Jake back. There are no more points of law to argue here. I, I want to cop a plea. It'll take him back to a time to kill, and they'll think of yeah, Matthew McConaughey that. and all those yeah. things that really launched you to where you are right now. Did you love sitting down with him again and putting him in a new place? Jake was a very autobiographical character. Yeah. When I wrote the story 35 years ago, I was that small town lawyer in Mississippi, very idealistic, dreaming of the big case, the big courtroom drama that would you know, establish me as a, as a badass trial lawyer. Uh, that was the dream, never happened. But I wrote that story from that point of view. Matthew took it to a whole this different level. You now have the opportunity to work on a case that matters. Matthew became Jake because the movie was so popular and he was so good in the movie. And um, I waited 20 some odd years before I brought Jake back in a, a book called Sycamore Row. And we were pleasantly surprised at the reception that Jake got the second time he came back. And uh, not only by uh, critics, reviewers, but also by the, by the sales numbers. People really uh, like Jake. And most of that's because of Matthew. Uh, he, he made Jake famous. And after reviewing the sales numbers from Sycamore <laughs> Row, I said, I'm not going to wait 24 <laughs> years again. Uh, so I brought him back last year, two years ago, with a book called Time for Mercy, which is yep. a really brutal uh, courtroom murder case. And um, I've since realized that Jake is very popular. He makes an appearance in uh, Homecoming the, for the first story in Sparring Partners, uh, not in the courtroom, but as a friend who... Um, is helping a buddy try to return to town. But there's enough of Jake. He'll be back, uh, hopefully, uh, sometime soon. The challenge with Jake is that you want to see him in court. You want to see the courtroom drama. And a small town guy in Mississippi can only have so many big cases. He's not, <laughs> right, right. not going to have a, ma a massive courtroom drama every other week, you know. Uh, so he's also growing up. He's maturing. His family's growing up. And so uh, there'll be, hopefully, no, at least one more Jake novel. I love your relationship with Matthew because that movie came along at a time people forget he was not well known as an actor at all. And you were kind of getting off the ground. The firm had, yeah. had blown up, but you were still rising yourself. It's fun to watch two guys who've reached sort of the zenith of their fields grow up together in a way. Yeah, well, with a contract for A Time to Kill, uh, I didn't sell the film rights for a long time. The first wave of movies came out, The Firm, The Pelican Brief, The Client, Chamber was not a big movie. Rainmaker with Matt mm -hmm. Damon. Those movies came out in the early 1990s, and I wouldn't sell Time to Kill. And finally, Joel Schumacher, who did The Client, convinced me to sell um, the film rights, and he was going to do A Time to Kill. And, and I said, OK, but I'm going to have veto power over some of this casting. I, I don't want to make the movie. I don't know how to make movies. I'm not going to write the screenplay. But I'm very protective of the character Jake and a couple of others in the book. And so I, I, I retain the absolute right to veto casting, which is very rare. But they gave it to me. And we got ready to film the movie, and we didn't have a star. And the money was on the table and uh, couldn't go wrong. Filming it in Mississippi with no star. And so they, they, they called Matthew in for a quick screen test and filmed him sitting in the office smoking a cigar. And then back in the old days, they, they FedExed me the cassette overnight. They stuck it in the machine, and there was Matthew. And uh, the accent was perfect because that's the way he talks, being from Texas. Charismatic, great-looking guy. 
Renee's first reaction was, I think I'm in love with him. <laughs> he said, I think we've got our guy. Yeah, that's our guy. A lot of the inspiration for the characters I know comes from the way you grew up, where you grew up, some people you knew. Um, it was humble. It was pretty modest. Uh, yeah. My father was a cotton farmer in rural Arkansas, and uh, it was a pretty hard life. Uh, a lot of kids in the family. But at the same time, I had two parents who were devoted to each other, and they were always there. And uh, we didn't have much. We didn't realize that. But the farming got to the point where Dad just couldn't. He never made a living. Mm. He, he lost crop after crop. And so he finally he fled the farm. We, we fled the farm in the middle of the night with, I think, some unpaid bills. Right? By the time I was you know, 15 years old, life had, had improved greatly for us. Uh, through my dad's hard work, uh, so, but you know, I, and I captured that story in a book called *A Painted House* yeah. that came out 20 years ago, and I, I wanted to write that book while my parents were still alive, to, because I, they were my resources, and we had a lot of fun doing that book. But it was it's very uh, autobiographical, very accurate, and that, but that's where I came from. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think my job is to think about what you tell me now tonight with joshua johnson streaming weeknights at 8 on nbc news now today is now a podcast available every morning listen wherever you get your podcasts what would you like to see from the federal government to keep buffalo safe if there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I'm not sure everybody knows the, the backstory of the book, A Time to Kill. You were an attorney, as mm -hmm. you say, a small town attorney looking for your big case. What made you think you could sit down and write a book that people might read about your experience having watched that trial in 1984 uh, that motivated you to sit down and write? I had no idea what I was doing. I had never written before. I had never thought about writing. It was not a childhood dream. It was not something I studied in college. It was just uh, this obsession with a courtroom drama that I had sort of cooked up, inspired by something I really saw, but changed a bunch of the facts. And I, the more I thought about this courtroom drama, uh, the more complicated it became, the more layers there were to it. And, and I finally said, okay, I'm gonna see if I can write this. And uh, that started a process that went on for three years, which is not a long time in the course of writing a novel. When you have a real job and you have other responsibilities, we had, you know, I was practicing law, I was in the state legislature in Mississippi. Yeah. Renee's having babies, you know, life was got kind of complicated. Um, but I, I hung with it, I hung with it for, uh, for three years. And it, in my spare time, wherever I, I I kept the current, it was all handwritten on legal pad. And after about a year and a half, I realized I was halfway through with my story as I envisioned it, the, 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 the drama. And we had not yet got to the courtroom. I kept plugging away. Renee was reading it. Uh, she was very encouraging, you know, keep going. 
but no one knew about it but the two of us. Mm-hmm. And I had no grand plans to you know, get it published when I finished. Um, it just, one thing led to the, and finally I was finished. And uh, the, the trial was over, the verdict was in. And uh, it was about a thousand pages. Uh, my secretary typed it, began sending it to New York, back and forth, the old submission, rejection, long before the internet. And I uh, finally found an agent who uh, liked it enough to, after a bunch of them said no, he took the book and he made the rounds in New York and the same folks who had already said no to me said no to him. <laughs> so it got two looks. And then finally we found a small press to publish it. It came out in June of 1989 and they printed 5,000 hardback copies and I bought 1,000 of them. <laughs> And I, I didn't have any money, but I had more than my publisher. And, uh, At least you're honest about that. People do buy their own books. <laughs> yeah, I'd give them away. Yeah. They were stacked up in my office. Most of my clients couldn't afford a book, so I just gave them the book. Uh, but it was a wonderful time. And at the, also, at the same time, um, I got myself into the habit of writing every day. I tell students, if you want to write, do it every day. You know, don't dream about it, just do it. And I had this idea for the second book or, or another book. Uh, that I really liked, and Renee really liked it. She thought it was much more accessible, much more commercial, mm. and that was The Firm. And when The Firm came out in uh, March of 1991, over 30 years ago, things changed uh, overnight. I was suddenly bored with the law, <laughs> <laughs> bored of the politics. I said, okay, I'm going to write. I'm gonna, my, the dream has come true. I can write full time. And because it was purchased, right, the movie rights before it even came out. Did you have a sense when somebody bought those rights that this was going to change everything for you? Did it feel like a big moment? We had uh, three big studios bidding for the film rights. At the last minute, somebody said, hey, should we check with the writer? So they called me at the last moment. Uh, I had no clue. There was no book deal. I wasn't sure the book was gonna get published. Wow. And then once we got the movie deal, the publishers woke up in New York and everybody wanted the book. Did you and Renee have a moment? I mean, there are moments along the way I know with my wife where you go, wow, life is changing a little bit for us. This is exciting. We built this together. Do you remember that moment? Oh, yes. We've had several great moments. But when I hung up the phone and I told Renee what the deal was for the film rights, uh, we were due to go to my mother's house for Sunday, Sunday lunch. We both grew up in very uh, conservative tight Southern Baptist households, okay? A lot of rules. Uh, one rule was you never talked about family money outside the family. We'll talk about selling the film rights, but we are never going to discuss the money. First thing Monday morning, Paramount Pictures issued a press release with all the details in it. So it took a couple of days for that to get back to our hometown and that changed everything. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You know, I've always wanted to sit and talk with you because I was in high school when The Firm came out. I remember flipping through that and saying, oh, this is fun. This is fun. Reading is fun. Do you, 
appreciate the impact you've had on people reading when you've sold 350 million books on making reading accessible and exciting and fun for people who may not otherwise have stepped through that door? Yeah, it's hard to gauge the impact that, uh, that you may have on people. Uh, but, but a lot of people have said nice things, just like you just said something nice about enjoying the reading. I've got a pretty good feel for you know, what it has meant to certain people. I have a lot of faithful readers, and they want that big legal thriller every October. And I'm going to come through as long as I can. Uh, they'll, they'll tolerate me writing something else, a baseball novel or the kids' books mm -hmm. or uh, a funny story like Skipping Christmas. But they want that legal thriller every October. And those fans have been loyal for 30 years now. I want to give those people the best book they've had yet, the best reading experience they've had yet. And that's my goal. I stay motivated to give them every time out. You know, it's hard to, uh, to get my head around um, 300 million books in 50 languages. It's always a fun moment when we're traveling somewhere, some out of the way place, and you sit at a little bookstore and you'll see a book in another language uh, or a big bookstore in, you know, in Europe, European cities to, to see a Grisham shelf, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah, we always stop and point and smile and make a joke and you keep going. Years ago when things were getting really crazy and there was a three or four year period, 91, 92, 93, when the books were coming out, but also the movies were coming out. And life was really, um, we were losing privacy that we realized um, how much we cherished our privacy. And uh, so we, we, you know, we were making adjustments in life, but we, we sat down one time and we said, look, this is, everything in popular fiction is temporary. You know, nothing's gonna last forever. Whether it's, whether it's books or TV or movies or sports or fashion or whatever, in, 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 in the popular, you know, popular culture, um, nobody stays on top forever. It's, it's all a temporary career. One of these days, the books are not gonna be as popular as they are now. Things are gonna change. And when that happens, let's, let's admit it and realize it. Let's be able to look back and say, it was a heck of a ride. We had a lot of fun and we didn't change. Mm -hmm. Kept our feet on the ground. We raised great kids and and so we're still, we're still, we're still waiting for the, <laughs> the books are still selling. <laughs> the books are still popping. You mentioned your process that you start on January the 1st, mm -hmm. wake up, time for a new book. Mm -hmm. You want to end it by July the 1st. I note by the clock that I'm eating into your writing time. I've got it. 7 a.m. I got a month. I got a month. Is it those fans that keep you getting up every New Year's Day to write a new one? Or are there ever moments where you go, gosh, I'm take a year off. I've done enough of these. I've thought about taking a year off. The motivation is, uh, again, after writing for 35 years, it's a daily habit. And, there, and there's, there's nothing else I can find to do in, in the morning between 7 and 11, 7 and 12. <laughs> I can't fill those hours any other way that I've found yet. Uh, so that's, I still cherish the, those moments, the early morning hours, going to my little writing cabin with no phones, no fax, no music, no internet, no interruptions and being able to create stories that bring a lot of pleasure to a lot of people. I could have quit 20 years ago, uh, but it's, so it's not about money. It's about being able to entertain and bringing pleasure to a lot of people. Uh, I still get a kick out of that. Are you like the rest of us? Do you stare at the screen some days and there's just nothing coming? You just drink your coffee and look at it, walk some, away? <laughs> <laughs> some days are slower than others. No, my, my goal every day is a thousand words. A thousand a day. Yeah, a thousand a day. I don't stare for long. Also, when I start the book, I've got a pretty good outline, so I know what's going to happen next. And uh, again, I tell aspiring writers, uh, you can waste a lot of time if you don't know where you're going. Mm. And if you always know where you're going, um, it's hard to get lost. And you know the end before you start. That's one of my rules of writing popular fiction. Don't write the first scene until you know the last scene. I talked to John Irving in Toronto a couple of years ago, and I said, is it true that you've said that you write the last sentence before you write the first one? And he said, that's true. Wow. I said, I'm not that smart, <laughs> but I, I do know the last scene before I start. You ever see a day, John, where you stop, you say, I've done it. I've sold all the books I'm going to sell. I've given the people what they want for 30 some years. I'm done. I can't see that day yet. Uh, I'm only 67 years old. Uh, if I stay healthy and 
and stay, you know, inspired creatively, I hope I can do it for a long time. Um, but again, I can't, I've, le I've learned, um, I've learned a few things. Y you never can predict what's going to happen next. And you can't worry about what's already happened. And, you know, never say never. I I've said I I'll never write that story again. Well, I wrote it. So I I've, le I've learned that, you know, be careful what you say. I'm not going to say I'm never going to retire, um, but I think there comes a time with some writers I've always admired, you know, as they get up in the years, it's time to quit. I, ho I hope I have the sense to do that. And I, I get pretty good advice at home. Well, I hope it keeps going. I hope you wake up every January 1st and, and keep writing the books. We, we love it. It's great to see you. Thank you, Willie. My pleasure. Thanks, good seeing you. Take Thank care. you. out there watching this is pop star plus for today we are so happy to have you coming up we're going to dive into the new remake looks hilarious the father of the bride we're going to get the scoop from the cast including stars gloria stefan and andy garcia we're also going to have the third hours chat with my buddy anthony anderson looking forward to that and later i'm sure there's some goonies fans out there that movie turns 37 this month and we thought we'd revisit that with an old interview that we found in our vault with producer steven spielberg ever heard of him Thought so. That's all coming up. But first, here's today's pop star headlines. Oh. Let's get to it. First, we got some big news for Beyonce fans. Overnight, the Grammy winner revealing the title and release date for what appears to be her next solo studio album. Multiple streaming services tweeting out the artwork with the words Act One Renaissance mm. and the release date of July 29th. It will reportedly feature 16 new tracks. And as the Act One wording teases, it could be just the first of a, maybe a multi-part album from Beyonce. Wow. Renaissance would be the seventh studio album from her. The last solo album way back in 2016, Smash Hit Lemonade. Since then, she's released a number of projects, including an album with her husband, Jay-Z, and the visual album, Black is King. But Beyonce fans this morning have something to look forward to uh, yeah. this summer, that's for sure. Next up, we're getting our first look at Ryan Gosling as Ken in the upcoming Barbie movie. And to say it blew up the internet would be an understatement because it did. Let's show you. There he is in his bleach blonde denim spray tan glory. You're not sure how we know it's Ken if you look around the waistband there. Oh my God, it says oh. Ken. It's Ken yeah. on the other oh wow. And as you can imagine, the first look sent people into a frenzy, but we're going to have to wait until July 20th through the 23rd to see the Barbie movie. Oh. We earlier wait, July 2023? Yeah. 2023. Yeah. Yes. Oh, like in a year? In a year. Oh yes. My God. Thank okay. you for that clarification. You have a long time. Uh, There's Margot Robbie, by the way, as Barbie. Wow. We got that image back in April. We don't know really anything about this project. You know, who's doing this is Greta Gerwig. Oh, yeah. She's directing it. So there's a lot of reason to believe it's not going to be as straightforward as oh. you might think it is. So hopefully we'll see the Malibu Mansion soon. I mean, did Ken wear like a jean suit like that? I don't remember. Like the Canadian tuxedo? That. Yeah. Yeah. No. I wouldn't have. I don't know. Yeah. I have <laughs> no idea. Next up, Sylvester Stallone is taking on his first ever big TV role, and it's with Taylor Sheridan, the creator oh. of Yellowstone in 1883 and mayor of Kings, or Youngstown. That's Jeremy. This guy has got so many great shows at Paramount. Yeah. This one's called Tulsa King. It's a new series that follows Sylvester Stallone's mob boss character as he's released from prison and relocated to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he gets up to no good. Of course. Here's a look at the trailer. When I was 17, I wanted to be a gangster. I married this life, and now, after keeping my mouth shut, I'm going to see if it married me back. Tulsa, I want you to go there. This is a joke. And you in town? Is it that obvious? That looks so that good looks to me. It had me, I mean, the, from Yellowstone, from The Sopranos. Yeah. yeah. Stallone gets out of jail, still a bag. That's got me a hello I right know, now. I know. Savannah's less you? excited. I don't understand. No, I mean, it's fine. Like, it's how you yeah. feel about Bridgerton. Oh, you know? oh, then you it's hate like, it. You have your thing, it. I have mine. And he looks totally great. Makes sense, yeah. Tulsa King premieres on Paramount Plus in November. And finally, quickly, we're learning more, a little bit more about the upcoming Fatal Attraction TV series. Whoa. That the original okay, film. Go. I got you back now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It was released in 1987. It starred Michael Douglas and Glenn Coase. Became uh, close. It became a classic uh, thriller. Uh, and then it followed the man who had a brief affair with a woman. She turns out to be obsessive. And now for the Paramount Plus adaptation, star Joshua, Joshua Jackson revealing how they're diving deeper into the Glenn Close character while keeping one of the most unsettling parts from the original. 
original. Oh, oh, rabbit. What is already one of the most iconic and, and compelling characters I think ever put on screen. We have the opportunity to burrow down deeper and deeper and deeper into that character to give a, a richer sense of like how that woman became and, and why she did the things that she did. There is definitely a bunny. Oh, oh Hydra uh, Pets. Uh, That'll yeah. be one to watch. No premiere date for that That'll quite yet. A few more stories for you up next. Sesame Street put together a fun song for all the dads out there ahead of Father's Day, made to sound and look like the now iconic Friends opening credits. This parody sees Elmo, Wesley, and Rosita singing with their dads for a true Father's Day treat. We love you every day and week and month and every year. I'll be there for you. Oh, that is well done, Sesame Street. Well done. And of course, a happy early Father's Day going out there, going to all you fathers and father figures for that matter. All right, finally, Austin Butler. The guy's everywhere. Get used to the name. He's the young actor taking on the role of Elvis in the upcoming biopic. Stars Tom Hanks as well. Butler has already gotten praise for his t turn as the king. Well, last night, Austin stopped by The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon, and to give Jimmy a little how to move like Elvis lesson. I just called it the side one. Yep. You can kind of, you can go from walking into a side. <laughs> so you go to the side first, and then from there, you just tap to the side. <laughs> but you, you use this arm almost like a windmill. A windmill, okay, ready? And this, this hand can almost be like you're holding a cane or something. Okay. So you kind of, from the side. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's why he's the best. That's like Elvis's version of the moonwalk. That looked very easy for him to do. All right, let's go. Um, that's all we've got is the form of headlines, but we've got a big show still coming up. Everything that you're going to want to know about the hilarious new Father of the Bride remake we'll have for you next. Stick with it. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Father of the Bride, the movie, featured the overwhelming antics of Steve Martin's character, George Banks, and of course, who could forget wedding planner, Frank, played by the hilarious Martin Short. The beloved film has a new remake, and the cast told us all about it. I would describe this version of Father of the Bride as uh, a remake, but it's not exactly like the two other versions of this. And it's the first time I, I've, I've seen a Hollywood movie with two different cultures, you know, Mexican and a Cuban American wedding. That's what sets this movie apart. It's very authentic to both cultures. It's very specific while at the same time being very universally themed, you know, very relatable for everyone. It's fun. It's such yeah. a fun movie. I really think that it stands on its own really well. You don't have to have watched the other Father of the Brides to really understand it. I have something to say. I'm engaged. Wow. <laughs> 
I propose. Oh, you propose? You propose? Oh, okay. You propose? Yes. You propose to him. Mm -hmm. He didn't propose to you. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Does anyone do that? I think that the Latin cast will be mainly a flavor of the movie because the central theme is really about how hard it is for the older generations to keep up with the changes happening in these times. For me, that theme feels like something that should speak across all cultures. And I kind of hope that most people, regardless of what ethnicity or or race they're from, they can say like, yeah, that's my dad. And hopefully people with opposing points of views can still sit together and break bread and enjoy. Two lawyers are out of college, working for a nonprofit, they're gonna pay for the wedding. Billy! Happy. I'm the father of the bride, and I will be paying for the wedding, and I'm gonna be walking my daughter down the aisle. Andy, Arcia, and Gloria Stefan are like Miami royalties, and they're the best of friends. So they were the perfect fit for this roles because, you know, everyone knows who they are, and it just felt like this movie was made for them. To have the privilege of having Gloria there with me as an old longtime friend and of course admirer of hers, but the fact that we have a relationship, our families have relationships, yeah, it's easy to, to sit and then go, okay, now we're this, and just lose yourself in this imaginary circumstance, but bring all our dynamic that we have in our friendship and in our own marriages that are that can feed the, this, this relationship and this particular couple, you know? I think the best way to describe it is is like, having your dream family to work with. I did channel Martin Short's frockness in the sense of uh, there's like a looseness and a hilariousness and a freedom to Martin Short as a performer and especially in this movie. And I think obviously this is a very modern interpretation of what a wedding planner is. But yeah, I think that I was inspired by Martin Short in the sense of like bringing a lot of improv and just kind of like riffing a lot on set and having the freedom to do that. And a lot of that made it into the movie, which I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Give me essay as Anna Mara Vera Wang and Zuhar Murad. I think what's so beautiful about both of our characters is their fortitude to just get the job done. You know, they both just get it done and then surprise themselves. And I think you really can like be or do anything these days. And um, I think our characters should be inspiration. Yeah, I think, in, when, especially when it comes to personal life, like with family and stuff, I think it's yeah. it's okay to really solidify yourself as the as the outsider and embrace it and, and not be scared to go your own way. Everyone, I think culturally, universally, we're all incredibly different, both as humans and even as cultures, but we are surprisingly the same and we all want the same things. So yes, it's a story about two Latin American families sort of clashing and then coming together, but it's still so universal. I think everybody will be able to relate with a, a character or will be able to relate with different situations. Well, I think that despite our diverse cultures, Latino cultures, because we're all very different, the Mexican from the Cuban, there are things that tie us such as the love for extended family that is exemplified in this film. You don't see that in any of the other ones. The music, the food, the dancing, the celebratory nature that we share. You know, but we're still in the struggle of having our children growing up in a different time and, and having different ways of wanting to be and different ways of wanting to celebrate their love stories. Happy. Ready? Yes, and you? No. Get ready to think, get ready to dance, get ready to laugh, and maybe shed cry, one or two yeah. tears. God, that looks so funny. We should mention that you can find Father of the Bride on HBO Max. Coming up next, the third hour and Anthony Anderson. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. You may know Anthony Anderson from his past role on Blackish or his recent role on the reboot of Law and Order. Well, these days, he's got a new project for Juneteenth, and he told the third hour all about it. This morning, we are catching up with Emmy and Golden Globe nominated actor Anthony Anderson. That's right. For eight seasons, he starred as TV husband and dad, Dre Johnson, on the hit show Blackish, which just aired its final season in oh. April. Anthony also recently reprised a role that he first took on back in 2008, playing Detective Kevin Bernard for the return of NBC's original Law and Order series. I would contend the best of the series, but uh, <laughs> but now, just in time for the celebration of Juneteenth, Mr. Anderson is out with a fantastic new docu-style film. It's from Ancestry. It's called A Dream Delivered, The Lost Letters of Hawkins Wilson, and it unites the descendants of a man born into slavery. Meet your family. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm Linda. Hi, I'm Kelly. Kelly, nice Kelly. to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Marie. Hi, Marie. Hello. 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 Are you guys huggers at all? Yes. And so are we. Okay. okay. And we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and they hug, they hug, mm -hmm. they hug. Anthony Anderson, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I mean, so this is a reunion, literally, like more than a century in, in the making. And I understand that, that it had, you had sort of this immediate connection to the project because you've spent some time trying to find some of the branches in your tree. I did. I did. Years ago, I, I started and found uh, uh, where I, I come from, uh, a village in Cameroon. Uh, and, and I found it apropos because I'm an artist, and that's where uh, a lot of the artists in Africa come from. Uh, and, and then, so I just wanted to continue to build on, on that family tree, and, and then partnering with uh, Ancestry, I was able to find those leaves, mm -hmm. you know, it, and it dates back to... Uh, 1852, wow. you know, uh, 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 my fourth great-grandfather, Owen B., uh, you know, was a freedman, a uh, freedman, uh, and uh, worked on a plantation, uh, you know, 70 hours a week from, from uh, he had to be on, on the field uh, at sunup and made four cents an hour. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he was one of the highest paid workers that they had. And, you know, just, you know, just finding, uh, just going through the history, you know, finding, you know, my second grandmother, Nancy, who actually owned her own farm and was oh. farming on her own farm in, in 1910 uh, and they had this blended family. So it, it was... It, it was a history uh, a lesson for me and my family. So, so the descendants of Hawkins Wil Hawkins Wilkins has that Hawkins Wilkinson has that letter. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very special, and it, it means more than uh, than most people know beyond the family. Yes, you know Hawkins Wilson's letter. Uh, you know he was sold into slavery uh, as collateral uh, when he was six or seven years old. Uh, we found out in in. in uh, in the records and torn away from his family. Uh, and 24 years later, he went to the Freedmen's Bureau to find his family mm. uh, as a free man. And, uh, you know, with grave detail, you know, talked about uh, his, his siblings, uh, his mother, and all of that, and, and who they belonged to, which really resonated with me uh, to hear this man talk about his siblings and who they belonged to uh, as property. And uh, unfortunately, 
uh, his letter never made it to uh, his family, uh, but it made it to them a couple of hundred years later uh, with, with Kelly and Marie, and they were able uh, to, to find other family members as descendants uh, of Hawkins Wilson. And speaking to the family, what intrigued you the most about what they thought of, of the letter and, and of everything? Uh, just a sense of uh, a full so so circle moment, sense of completion. Uh, you know, here it is, you know, a six or seven year old boy being ripped away from his family uh, who remembered everything about his family 24 years later and trying to find them. And, uh, and just the sense of what you know, Kelly and Marie was going through, why, why they did certain things, why they were drawn to certain places. Uh, you know, passing through this small town, uh, you know, they would, all, they would love to go to, passing by this church and going into worship in this church, not knowing that Hawkins Wilson uh, was a minister in that church. Wow. Not, not knowing that Marie, the mother, uh, would, would go on to become a minister herself. <laughs> so the, these ties that, that binded this family together for a couple of hundred years, came uh, circle. yeah, it came full circle. We should congratulate you while you're here. You're a college graduate now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Howard I am. University Bison. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. 30 years after you were supposed to. 30 to... years after I was supposed to graduate back in uh, 1992, I, I finally made it. I finally awesome. made it. Awesome. Of all the, uh, yeah, I was going to say, the, of all the accomplishments that Andy, Anthony Anderson has. It, it, it feels great. It was, I was talking about full circle. Felicia, Dr. Felicia Rashad, who's a friend of mine, Taraji Henson. Uh, Dr. Felicia Rashad is the, uh, the dean of the College of Fine Arts. Uh, Taraji Henson gave uh, the commencement speech, and we were students together at, wow. at, at Howard University. The assistant dean of the College of Fine Arts, Denise Saunders, uh, we were classmates, and they all helped me uh, matriculate through Howard University. That's amazing. amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Anthony Anderson, Dream Delivered, The Lost Letters of Hawkins Wilson. It can be seen on Ancestry.com slash Black History. That starts tomorrow. And also Paramount Plus and Pluto TV starting on Juneteenth this weekend. Good to see my buddy Anthony Anderson here in Studio 1A. All right, next we're traveling to the Goondocks for a Goonies flashback. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. And who's this? Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. It's hard to believe that it's been 37 years since the release of Goonies. The cult film is about a pack of kids who stumble upon an old treasure map that takes them on quite the adventure. The film's producer, the one and only Steven Spielberg, told us back in 1985 here at Today all about the film. Today we begin a three-part interview with the indefatigable Steven Spielberg via satellite from California. And first of all, I wanted to know, what's a Goonie? Well, a Goonie is anybody who doesn't belong to uh, the popular crowd. And uh, a Goonie individually might not amount to very much, but when you put six or seven Goonies together, you know, you're, you're, you're playing with matches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, these kids are, are best friends, and they've been together for, you know, in, in, in kid years, perhaps three years, which is a long time for kids that age to be together and know each other. And uh, they each possess these unique talents, and when they all get together, uh, they, they decide to have their last weekend fling or last weekend adventure. 
which uh, snowballs and becomes what this movie's about. What do you look for when you interview a young child for a movie? Energy, a, a complete, you know, lack of intimidation, a kid who can make me laugh and tell a lot of jokes and be great at video games. I mean, uh... <laughs> one, of the, one of the children is the, is the little Vietnamese boy that you used in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Did you know right away that you wanted him in Goonies? Yeah, I, I told uh, Key that we wanted him in Goonies even uh, before anyone else had been, you know, cast. So we actually designed that part. Uh, uh, Key came first and the writing of that role came second. Two of the children are the children of famous a actors. Who are they? Uh, Josh Brolin is the son of uh, James Brolin. And then uh, Sean Astin is the son of Patty Duke and John Astin. Did that have anything to do with your picking them? We didn't even know they were related to Patty Duke Astin, and we had no idea that uh, Josh Brolin was Jim Brolin's son until after we wanted them. We found out later. It had nothing to do with and, and it was... It, I really respect the kids for never bringing it up. Is this a story been kicking around in your mind for a long time? Do you think it has overtones of, of the Indi Indiana Jones stories? There's a lot of underground chases and rocks that close up secret passages and underground tunnels and all kinds of stuff like that. Well, I think it really has its roots in the Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, Mark Twain legends, especially the David O. Selznick production of Mark Twain where Tom and Becky were lost in the cave. They right. had all sorts of booby traps and escarpments and Indian Joe climbing up the, you know, the cliff after them with a knife in his teeth. And I, that, I think that was the, 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 the main source of the inspiration for the, uh, the story, Goonies. Look at this. You see what I found? How tough is it to make a movie where virtually the entire cast are children? Well, it, it's certainly a different problem because most of the most of the day you have to remember the cast is in school. We only have the kids on the set four hours out of an often 12-hour day. That's all the, the time they're allowed to work. So you really don't have the kids around that much. Somehow they're always underfoot, but they're not where you want them on the set on their marks. And uh, that was a problem for Donner who really had had a very large uh, uh, palette to, to, you know, to work off of. He had a lot of colors to paint with, but he didn't have the essential primary colors most of the day, and he had to work around that. That, that was a real challenge, I think, that Dick succeeded in, in you know, pulling off. Now, Goonies is a film presented by Steven Spielberg, but it is directed by uh, Richard Donner. Right. Why did you pick him for this assignment? Well, because I think Donner's a big kid. I've known Dick for a long time, and I, I, I think he's just a big, a big boy. And I thought uh, he'd be great for it. I'm a big fan of his movies, especially the, you know, the first Superman that he directed. If he shoots something uh, that you're not pleased with, can you overrule him? No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, how would I feel? If somebody overruled me? I would. I would hate that. And I think part of the luxury of uh, working with my organization is that we don't like to overrule the directors. If the directors really feel something, they're impassioned about something, then it's up to them to, uh, it's their responsibility to see that passion through. Although I'll get blamed for it. If, if nobody likes it, I'll be the one to get blamed for it. But that's pretty much the, you know, the, the, the risk that I take. And I think it's very important to leave the director alone and let him make his movie. When you were a schoolboy in grammar school and high school, you were already dreaming fantasies and stories. Did you ever dream during school hours? Daydream? I mean, just sit yes. around the schoolroom and, 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 and zone out staring at the blackboard and not seeing what's written on it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, all the time. About, about four days a week, because I always was very careful to be absent one of those five days. Yeah. yeah. You, you were not a straight-A student in school, Stephen? I was a straight student at school. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't get... I got straight C's, actually. Straight C's, C-minuses sometimes. Uh, but no, I was not a straight-A... No, no. So cool to see Spielberg way back then. What a trip, and happy birthday, Goonies. All righty then, another terrific episode of Popstar Plus, well, not too bad anyway, is come and gone. We hope you enjoyed it. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, same time, same place. Be well. Bye-bye.
Oh my gosh. Hi, we see you. You're watching today all day. It is Thursday, so happy you're tuning into our digital show today in 30. Yes, we've got a lot of great stuff to tell you about too, but let's start with the impact of that massive new interest rate hike. We're going to take a look at how it affects your retirement account, your credit card bills, and then Vicki Wynn will tell us what potential home buyers need to know as the cost of loans skyrocket. And then as we approach Father's Day weekend, Carson is sharing a really great conversation about life lessons on and off the green with golfer Justin Thomas and his father, and then Carson's son, Jack, got into the action. He joined the sit-down. Plus, who better to show us how to throw the ultimate summer party than our own Jill Martin? She's here to share a few of her favorite festive products that will impress any guests. Love that. And the funny girl Chloe Feynman is here to talk about her big movie debut. So shall we get to it? Let's go. Time for Today, Today in 30. 30. We've got it all covered this morning, starting with NBC's Tom Costello. Hey, Tom, good morning. Oda, good morning to you. Yeah, the Fed is really working on high stakes here because it's walking a tight rope. It has to hit the brakes on inflation without crashing the economy. Keep in mind, we've had very low interest rates for years now. The Fed trying to bring interest rates back up to something that's a little bit more normal. But will higher borrowing costs now prove to be a shock to the system? Yeah. From credit card charges to new mortgages to home improvement loans, Americans are about to pay even more. The Federal Reserve, charged with keeping employment high and inflation low, pulled out a sledgehammer Wednesday, coming down hard on skyrocketing inflation, hiking interest rates by three quarters of a point, the most since 1994. The Fed's key interest rate, which consumer loans are built on top of, now runs at about 1.75 percent and likely to rise to 3 percent this year, with the Fed promising more rate hikes to come. The current picture is plain to see. The labor market is extremely tight and inflation is much too high. The last time inflation was this high, 1981. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. NASA launched the first space shuttle mission. Ronald Reagan was president. And Raiders of the Lost Ark was number one at the box office. Prices up more than 10% that year. Today, they're up almost 9%. Gas, food, shelter, clothing, everything. At a food bank in Oakland, California, Jessely Arias says even the basics are suddenly out of reach. Like, we're already spending like $300, $400 extra a month than what we used to before. It's overwhelming. Like, how much worse is it going to get? While in Kansas, farmer Dan Kirchin says even a good crop yield won't offset diesel prices that have doubled. Fertilizers and fuel, it was just, just the other day, we put uh, uh, how many thousand gallons of fuel a day in those two combines just because uh, that's what it takes now and it's so expensive. With the Fed taking decisive action, Wall Street snapped a five day losing streak on Wednesday. The Dow, NASDAQ, and SP all higher. But Chairman Powell also warns unemployment will likely rise as the economy starts to cool. We at the Fed will do everything we can to achieve our maximum employment and price stability goals. We've already seen the impact of this. Mortgage applications dropped by half last week. And that's because interest rates have been ticking up all year as the Fed it was expected to raise rates and then did. And we're going to see rates continue to move high. Adjustable rate mortgages, credit cards, for example, home equity lines, all of those will continue to move higher in the coming weeks. Lock in your rate now if you can. Pay off your credit card balances now. Savannah, back to you. Yes, yeah, seems they're only going one way. Tom, thank you. And this morning, we're taking a close look at the impact of those newly raised interest rates. Uh, the Federal Reserve announcing yesterday there could be more rate hikes to come, and that means the cost of loans, especially home mortgages, will go up. So it begs the question, what does that mean for potential home buyers? NBC senior consumer investigative correspondent Vicki Wynn is here to help break down what's become quite the ongoing debate. Should you rent or should you buy, Vic? Hey, good morning to you. Well, mortgage interest rates have nearly doubled this year, but in some cities, the real estate market is still red hot. Frustrated home buyers are getting sidelined. This morning, the questions to ask to help you decide if you should get on the path to home ownership or press pause. From Wall Street to Main Street, all eyes are on the Federal Reserve. Just about everything we buy on credit will get more expensive. As promised, the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates to tame inflation. But that's only inflaming the hearts 
of would-be homebuyers. Average 30-year mortgage interest rates now top 5%. That's up from less than 3% a year ago. Meanwhile, home prices continue their meteoric rise, with the median home price nearly $430,000 last quarter. I was actually considering just getting a cute little single-family starter home. Demila Epps is a 24-year-old nurse in Atlanta who has been looking to buy a home. I kind of put myself into a situation where do I want to buy a house or do I want to just continue renting? That decision made even tougher because the cost of rent is also going up. Nationwide, one- and two-bedroom apartments up more than 25% from a year ago. Demila's rent for her one-bedroom apartment in Atlanta increased from $1,475 a month to $2,055. A $600 increase, I just couldn't do that. That's why I put myself into, okay, let me just think about getting a house. She saved up enough for a 3.5% down payment, about $15,000, but she says she kept getting outbid. So Demila put a pause on her home search. So Demila, I want to bring in Winnie Sun. She's a financial advisor who's been listening in with us as you've explained your situation. Hey, Winnie. Hello. Thank you for having me. So Winnie, what's Demila doing right? The first foremost, I love the fact that Demila is comfortable talking about her finances. The other thing is she's really focused on what she can afford and not going beyond her budget. She says Demila was smart to pause her home search and you should only buy if you have a 20% down payment plus an additional 6% for closing costs. You plan on staying in the same home for at least five years and you have about six months pay in savings for emergency repairs. Those are steep entries for ownership, but she says you can save money while renting. To do so, spend no more than 30% of your income on rent. Negotiate a longer lease, maybe two years instead of one to lock in your rental rate. Get a roommate to offset increasing rents. And if you have a parking spot or space in a garage, rent it out for extra income. And reduce other major expenses like gas by carpooling, biking, using public transit, or downsizing your vehicle. You don't need that fancy car right now because our number one financial goal is to get you into the home that you really want. If you can afford the house of your dreams, don't let the rising rates scare you away. Right now, the interest rate, although a little bit higher than it was a few years ago, but it's still significantly lower than historical mortgage rates. Now, because housing is typically our highest monthly expense, financial experts say that buying can really help you control one of the biggest costs in your budget so that you're not at the whim of a landlord. Oh. But renting, don't forget, that gives you flexibility. And remember, you generally do not have to pay for repair. So there are benefits to yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So rent or buy is one big question. The other big question right now for a lot of folks is what kind of mortgage should I get? I mean, should you get an arm? Should you get a fixed rate? Yeah, those adjustable rate mortgages are bouncing back. They're actually, uh, they've doubled in size since the the, the beginning of the year. So those can work for buyers if you have a high risk tolerance and you also aren't planning to stay in one home for longer than that adjustable rate period. Winnie says that fixed rate mortgages, those are the ones she recommends to her clients because they are predictable and constant. So you really want to do your homework, talk yeah. to a bunch of lenders and understand what that rate can adjust to and if you could still afford it. I know. Oh, I, 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 I like those fixed rates. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, just, yeah, yeah. I'm, like too nervous. I'm a nervous Nelly. Yeah. Yeah. Old school. Yeah. Can you negotiate, <laughs> by the way, with some of these lenders? You can and okay. you can shop around and you should. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Thank you, Vic. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We are back with today celebrates dads and recently Carson you got to catch up with one of the biggest names in golf Justin Thomas Good. his dad Mike Thomas who also happens to be his coach that must have been a fun concert. yeah it was like a dream Loved assignment yeah. for me I love <laughs> golf I love dads I love being a dad so it was really fun to go down there in the spirit of Father's Day we went to Jupiter Florida and I got to bring my son Jackson of course we play golf um, my father died when I was five my stepdad and I forged our relationship literally on the golf course so this was a really special thing for me Justin also shares that with his dad Mike so many fond memories going back to when Justin was just a little boy and all the life lessons that we've all learned on the golf course at just 29 years old Justin Thomas is one of golf's most recognizable stars and one of the best players in the world a 15-time winner on the PGA Tour his resume boasts two major titles the PGA Championship last month and also winning it for the first time in 2017 so JT, give me some of your earliest memories of learning about the game of golf from your dad. Oh man, uh, I've had a lot of a lot of memories. Hey, Daddy. Oh, good shot. Our best and probably fondest memory. I'm just hitting balls and practicing all day, waiting for dad to get done with work so we can go play nine holes. Justin's dad, Mike Thomas, worked 90 hour weeks as a teaching pro at Harmony Landing in Goshen, Kentucky. He is the only coach Justin's ever had. I had read that you got serious about golf at some point. Mm -hmm. You were like, I want to get a coach. Your dad was like, well, I am your coach. <laughs> yeah. And you said, no, a real one. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a true story. We have some laughs on that because, you know, I didn't know any better. The biggest memories I have from when he was young was all the chipping contests mm -hmm. we used to have up at the putting green. They were pretty fierce battles, uh, a lot of competitiveness going on. He continued to do really special things at every level he was playing at, whether he was eight years old then 10. 12 and so forth. The heart that he had and the stomach that he had was really something that you couldn't teach. Thank you! You know, my relationship with my stepdad was born and raised on the golf course. I lost my dad when I was five years old. And everything about life that I've learned, everything that I am as a man now is with my dad on the golf course. What sort of life lessons did you learn on the golf course? There's a reason why there's nothing like going out and playing golf with your dad. When we get on the 18th green, you know, take hands, hugs, say thanks. That was a lot of fun. Those memories, but just being able to enjoy it. Um, I think that was always something my dad hammered down my throat is just to enjoy what you're doing. And how has your relationship evolved even now? Before Southern Hills, you were frustrated and it wasn't going well. You were just out there kind of grinding. I'll sometimes get on my dad like, we need to do this. Or like, why, why aren't you saying this? Or why aren't you saying that? He's like, I could tell, you know, it's kind of like, you need to calm down kind of thing. Like just play golf, not golf swing. But if we're not kind of having those maybe butting heads moment, like we're holding each other accountable and right that's how we've gotten to where we are golf runs deep in the thomas family mike is a former pga pro and his father paul who passed away last year played professionally as well justin says he misses his grandfather even his no filter when you're 85 there's no filter it's like well you really just couldn't make anything today i'm like yeah i'm, I'm aware grandpa thanks for telling me <laughs> i love that video that when he called you during the press conference hey grandpa can i call you back i'm in the middle of a press conference <laughs> i i still keep all his voicemails from and, and I'll listen to him from time to time I mean nothing would cheer me up like uh, like hearing from him the no filter real yeah. real talk is sometimes what you need to hear I wondered if it really resonated with you how lucky you are that your dad's gotten to see you win so much and you got to share all of that with him yeah definitely the first the PGA at Quail Hollow when I see that you know that video and my dad just kind of goes like this like it's it's one of the few things that gives me you know a knot in my throat it was such a cool moment for us yeah that's special what are you most proud of him as a man off the golf course for sure more more proud of him as a person than as a golfer and we always tried to give the message to him that people are going to remember how you treated them more so than what your accomplishments were in the sport. I'm more proud of his willingness to give and be good to other people than I am of his accomplishments in golf. There's a lot to be proud of. He started the Justin Thomas Foundation to help children in need fulfill their potential. He's also an ambassador for the sport, hosting the Justin Thomas Junior Championship. It is a very unique, totally, totally different than any kind of winning golf tournament feeling, but it's it's an unbelievable feeling. Justin once famously gave his dad a sand wedge that he still walks around with. I've heard about it, but I had to ask the story behind it. How it started is it's just my dad, he always needs something to hold and kind of lean on. I go to my bag to get my 60 to chip and I'm like, dad, I'm like, 
get, like, just choose a different club. I honestly got so fed up with that. I'm like, I'm just gonna start carrying another wedge that is strictly for you to walk and use. Right. Now, it's also a special keepsake. Justin gets the club stamped, marking fun moments with his dad at every tournament. We go to this barbecue restaurant. He stamped it Meat Coma, and the date of the tournament's on there. Every tournament since then is stamped on there. I was having my own father-son moment, too. <laughs> my son, Jackson, was there interviewing Justin for his assignment with NBC Nightly <laughs> News Kids Edition. I know your dad's your coach. What was it like? Because my dad's my coach, and sometimes you can get me a little mad, kind of yeah. always like giving me It doesn't me change, by the way. It, it doesn't? doesn't? Okay. Yeah. I'm 29, and yeah. it still happens from time to time. And this has been really special. I want to thank you guys on a, on a Father's Day weekend. I'm thinking about my dad, and you've met my son, who's here, Jackson, yeah. who spoke to you a little bit for our, his nightly news kids thing as yeah. well. So this is a real special mm -hmm. weekend for us. A happy Father's Day. Yeah, yeah thank you. Guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Oh, they're really such a great family. Yeah. I, I loved doing that. As you can imagine, we were in Justin's house in Jupiter, and the, the Today Show setup is there, the whole crew. And yeah. so I'm like, well, I should go first. And there's a chair for Justin, you yeah. know, the interview chair. Yeah. And Jackson's going to interview him for night. Let me go first. Let the kids see how, how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, Jackson, you're going to go first. Jackson sits there with Justin, crushes it. I'm in the other room, like, <laughs> biting my nails. I'm like, how's it going? How's it going? And all I hear is Jackson laughing and JT's laughing. Uh -oh. I'm like, undoubtedly, this interview is going to uh -oh. be better than whatever I do. Wow. Uh, but it was awesome. Justin is a great guy. Mike's a great guy. It's a yeah. great Father's Day piece there. So we just want to thank them so much. And uh, later today, you can watch the Justin Todd. The real interview is with my son. It's on uh, this week's uh, Nightly News Kids Edition, which is a great program, NBCNews.com. Or you can check it out on YouTube. And, of course, all the golf action, NBC Sports ex exclusive uh, live coverage of the U.S. Open starting today through this weekend across NBC USA Network and Peacock. JT's ranked fifth in the world. He's uh, right up there with John Rahm and Rory as the yeah. favorites to win a, the, another major this weekend. So Man, you got us a, in the Wow. For golf, this is a father. This is a quintessential father-son weekend. Cool. I know how you're going to be spending your father's. Yeah. Yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. It's beautiful, right. Carson. Yeah. Great job, Jack D. Great job. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We are back with a preview of this morning's brand new episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. He's planning the ultimate summer bash. You know what? Everyone's looking for a good time. Yes. And well. these are all the, everyone. That's any time of the year. Yeah, well, well, I'm so excited to share this month's episode because it doesn't matter if you're the host or a guest. Plus, I chatted with Broadway superstar Adina Menzel about her new clothing line for QVC called Encore. Take a look. I wanted to find this jumpsuit, like a onesie that you could wear to bed that felt super soft and you could wake up and throw on different shoes and go throughout the day and you feel great. So I'm calling it the swing 
jumpsuit because for anyone who doesn't know, in the theater, the swing, I didn't know which direction you were going there, so I'm glad that we're going this one way like that. The swing is the most respected person in the theater. They are the person that learns all of the rules. They dance, act, do everything, and I've always just admired them so much. She's just awesome. And I want to remind everyone that they can scan the QR code below if you want to shop along with us. So let's start with the, the swing. The swing? Before yeah. we dig in, we should mention that Adina Menzel, paid spokesperson for QVC, you also have a line at QVC. But yes, let's yes. talk about the swing. So what I love about this is it's so versatile. She, her line is great um, that she says about everything. It goes from the sleepwear to streetwear. Oh. Because this is something, feel the material on this. It's a French terry. Mm -hmm. um, it's all sizes, extra, extra small through 3X, also petites available, follows the lines of the body, super comfy, cozy, mm -hmm. and has a hood, comes in three colors. And her line is really all about comfort yeah. and being able to go from home to an event. And so check out what, um, our you, streaming special. Once you put that on and get line. up, coffee, you like this. Yeah, you so this, this is, I drink this every single morning, the cold brew coffee cans, mm -hmm. $48 for 12 cans. So this is from a company called New Range, and there's different ones. So you could pick the black cold brew, the mm -hmm. cold brew coffee, that's the one I drink. The latte also is delicious. And what's great about this is it's a Guatemalan dark roast. Um, one has a chocolatey smooth flavor, and the latte is vegan with a coconut cream oh, infused coffee. Mm -hmm. So it has just the right amount of sweetness. If you like to get up in the morning and just have your coffee cold and boom. ready, boom, throw it These in your bag. These glasses look great. Lovely. Coffee in this one, I thought this was a play play mark. Is that a, no, no, no. It's not. I don't play around. I don't play around. This is an espresso martini actually mm -hmm. made oh, with okay. New Range. That was their original intention. So if anyone wants to try, cheers. I don't to do the espresso. Best. I love a Cosmo. Okay. I so, yes, yeah, so you, you, you have to walk. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So these are the Libby Cosmopolitan martini glasses, 12 for under $38. Okay. Now um, you could put, obviously, martini Yep. in them. You can also elevate your appetizers or desserts by serving them in these cute glasses. Right. You can use them. The brand says they're dishwasher safe, which makes party cleanup easy. I love this dishware. Mm-hmm. So feel it. It's melamine. This is oh, all I use. What is it called? Melamine. melamine. Oh. This so, is very old school. I mean, yeah. as far as the material. I we love this. We used to have these as kids. Especially w with your kids. Oh. Yes, we were saying there's like so much stuff, and yep. when you're serving food outside, you don't want to have to worry. This is the Zach Designs 12 piece dinnerware set. Under $50. There's all different patterns. Check them out on today.com. Summer fun. Summer fun. Summer we're looking fun. for some fun. So, Jill, this looks really funky, too. I this really is like. so beautiful as a gift. I love this. This is the Agat. Uh, and Bamboo Kitchen set, $56 to $64, but we have an exclusive deal mm -hmm. for our viewers, of course, from Bon Vivant Designs. These are beautiful kitchen items. Look at the boards. That's with the, cool. Yeah, isn't this like gorgeous? This There's with... all different versions of it. You can see it. So the deal is $28 to $32 mm -hmm. for any of these. That's 50% off, so those should go And quick. Bamboo, very sustainable. Yes, and beautiful with the again. Cheers, Joe. Joe. Thanks Cheers. so much. To shop these products, scan the QR code, text SHOP to 34318, or head to today.com slash shop all day. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
Y'all get ready to laugh. SNL's <laughs> Chloe Feynman is in the house. Chloe is known for spot-on celeb impressions like Drew Barrymore, <laughs> Nicole Kidman, and Timothy Chalamet. Oh, Chalamet, I like him. <laughs> and now we get to see her in the rom-com Father of the Bride more than 30 years after the last one. That one, you remember, starred Steve Martin and Diane Keaton. Okay, Chloe plays the role of the wedding <laughs> oh, planner, yeah. which we all remember, stepping into the shoes of the incredible Martin Short. Take a look. So, prices usually range from about here to here. So where do we land? How about there? Mm. Give me S.A. Azanamara Vera Wang and Uzu Hamura. Fun. Oh, my gosh. Wait, we got to get to it, but we just saw Austin Butler downstairs. Uh -huh. Did, were you totally into him? Isn't he amazing? He's the sexiest man alive. <laughs> but, can, can, I thought we already had Chalamet, and now we have like a new. Oh, are you got, more into Timothy? Or I hate to say I've shifted a little bit. You shifted just now in this moment. I'm a Butler girl. Is You're that what a we Butler call girl. Oh, okay, wait. Yourself? Can you can you do an Elvis impression? It's a lot of his lip, Bernard's lip, I'm talking I about his oh, yeah. southern accent down in Graceland. We'll work on it. We'll get it. You got it! I think you're pretty close. You sound really? a little bit like Bill Clinton. It's a little Johnny Depp, but we will talk about it. Oh, do you have a Johnny Depp? Uh, been should, I don't know if we need to do it, but yeah, it's there. It's there. <laughs> okay, first yeah. of all, this movie, yes. we've been wanting it. Because oh, some of us of a certain age yeah. Yeah. remember when we saw the first yeah. one the first time. Are you mm -hmm. one of those people? Absolutely. I think I was six. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, you're younger, so a little younger. But I, I understood it. Yes. Right. Yeah. So what was stepping into those shoes again? Because a lot of people do the comparison thing. Uh -huh. We just had Gloria Estefan and Andy Garcia mm -hmm. on. They are, they've got great comedic timing, and then here comes the comedy queen stepping right into <laughs> yes. it. What was it like working with that cast? I mean, they, yeah. we were such a family. Yeah. We had our premiere in Miami yesterday. <laughs> I'm still are you tired. Tired, hungover, yeah. swollen, swollen yeah. danced out. Yeah. Okay. yeah, there was like, like we had a, a huge welcome to Miami party that felt like a rap party at Gloria's before we Wait, had to at start. House. Wait, at yeah. What was her house like? It's <laughs> beyond. Yeah, there's really? two. Oh, okay. I think I don't know if this was the guest house or the house house, but it was ginormous. And was there? What did you? So that was before you shot. All of us were like. Oh, we have to go to work tomorrow. And people were like jumping in the pool Wait, at 4 a.m. Yeah. Them. Did you stay up till 4 a.m.? Absolutely. You're at Gloria's house. Did Gloria stay up till 4 a.m.? Yes, she does. Oh. And her you heels. couldn't be friends with her. No, you can't. I would go to bed earlier. But wait, wait, wait. Was there music there? Good music? Live music. Oh, um, it started raining and we danced to the, the conga. <gasps> oh, you did? Yeah. Come and, and shake your we body. Heard she they taught you how that. to conga. We heard she taught you salsa. She taught me salsa and then conga in the rain. As okay. people were jumping in her pool. That's amazing. Yeah, that's just a week of the shooting. That feels just a typical week. And to shoot in Miami, too, must yeah. have been incredible. Incredible and crazy weather. All right, yeah. so yeah. We, we know you, uh, especially from SNL. Mm -hmm. And so is SNL's a wrap, right? You finished up for this season. Yeah. Does it How, feel like school's yeah. over? Like, 100%. Are you the summer? Well, we just like to look at you. Okay. You're so cray. Look at you. What are you doing? Do you know that when Kate McKinnon was here, she put her shoe on Hoda's face? And I'll say, she was like, I don't do that. And I was like, yes, you do. You do. I was like, yes, your feet she go does all it over the place. all the time. Yes. That's, she that was said sad, it, though. Was it sad saying goodbye was, to Kate? Well, it happened first at a table read that, yeah. where they oh. did the alien abduction, and all of us were crying. Oh. I had no idea. You really, like... You hear rumors and stuff. Oh, you didn't know she was going no. Until the table read? Until that table read, oh. and I was like, <laughs> what? And also <laughs> Catherine Hahn and Pete Davidson. All the, all yeah. The, yeah. Catherine Hahn. Oh, did I just make no, that up? No. Catherine, <laughs> who is that? Catherine Hahn, our, our fellow <laughs> cast member here on SNL. <laughs> Wait, no. Edie Bryant. Edie Bryant. Edie Bryant. Edie Bryant. <laughs> Yo, please, please. I'm just making things up. Catherine I wish Hunt. Catherine Hunt was. Catherine, Catherine if you're watching, should host. you should host. Oh, I say that every year. Oh, you do? I do. <laughs> okay, well, I just was reading your I mind. Do. Uh, so, so She's actually, it's weird because she's my number one who should oh, host. And I bring really it. Is? Yes, yes. I bring okay, it up well, constantly. I, see, sorry. I know we talked see, about you this. You read my mind. Turn, look how you turn that beat around. Wait, just uh, like no, that. no, honestly, it must have been that. Um, and I just, you know, we, we got to wish Heather McMahon a happy wedding weekend. Oh, no. Are you going to be in it? No. Are you? But I'm watching.
watching from afar. Yeah, me too, via social media. Via social. Do you think it's weird she didn't invite her best friends? <sighs> you know, you know, it's probably a small, intimate Italian. It must be, it must be very intimate. <laughs> Now that was a great show. Was it? Will you join us tomorrow on today? We're going to close out this week. Five-time Grammy winner John Batiste. He's going to be on our plaza. It's going to be an incredible concert. We'll see you then. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Well, I, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. Cool. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. And I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Today, Chef Jet Tila is going to bring the heat and teach me a few tricks for an easy at home barbecue. We'll be making pulled pork sandwiches with an Asian apple slaw, plus a side of hearty cornbread. I am feeling ready to tackle this one. So let's get started. I'm so happy you're here. It's great to be here. I'm glad that you want to learn to teach me foundational stuff because I don't know anything. Have you heard? I don't buy that, Savannah. Oh. I've been watching you cook and come. you've come a long way. So what do we do? What's our plan? Right. Our plan for today is season the pork, sear the meat before braising, cut the vegetables and mix the dressing for the slaw, make and bake the cornbread, shred the pork, assemble the sandwiches, plate and serve. Our barbecue brothers are gonna get mad at us yes. for calling this barbecue. We are um, creating a version of barbecue in the house by braising. Barbecue technically is smoking something for a very long time until okay. it breaks down. Okay, no okay. smoking. Braising is, like, what does that mean, really? Very simply stated, we're gonna take a tough cut of meat mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to cook it uh, slowly with a little bit of liquid so all of the toughness breaks down. Uh, we're gonna cook the crap out of we're it. We're gonna cook the crap out of it okay. and make it delicious. First thing we're gonna do is gonna mince an onion. Ooh. Yeah, so um, I mince. I don't know if I've minced before. Have you diced? Oh, yes. It just means smaller dice. Okay. That's all it means. This is one thing I learned. Show me. When you have a round thing, do you, you gotta oh, make oh, a flat side. Oh, let me show side. you another way. So can you cut down? Yeah. But not all the way through. Okay, yes. Just I leave, can. It, leave it connected. I gotcha. Like this. Okay. You're totally killing it. I'm. My, what a sharp knife this is. <laughs> Isn't that sharp though? For yeah. Real. It does make it easier, assuming you don't cut yourself. Now we're gonna come inwards now. You see, we're gonna follow the line. To yeah. Okay. You lead with a tip down, and then and then rock. You know that rocking oh, motion? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. See how that yeah. feels? Yeah. Uh -huh, I do. You're a great cook. It's just all about believing you're a great cook. You're, you're killing it. You are a sweet talker. No, it's the truth. Look what you're doing. You're going to make me cry, or maybe <laughs> it's just the onion. Yeah, okay. it's definitely the onion. Okay. Definitely the onion. Are these mincy enough? Those are beautifully mincy. And we're going to teach you to do a dry rub. So dry rub is basically a, a seasoning mix that yep. goes on a uh, piece of beef for barbecue. We're gonna apply it to the braise. Okay. Uh, so. Brown sugar. Brown sugar, how about? Oh, you're one of those, put a piece of bread in the brown <laughs> sugar, how much? Uh, we're gonna go three, two, one, so three tablespoons. Okay. So salt, two. Okay. And again, that you can. That's a lot of salt, and this is coarse salt, I uh, see. I mean, I know it seems like a lot of salt, but it is for four pounds of pork butt. I like paprika. Mm -hmm. That was coriander. Okay. That was ground coriander. This, this is, is like garlic. garlic powder, yeah. yeah. The one pepper. Yeah. One pepper, yeah. You can either whisk it or stir it or whatever you want. You Look at that. You just made a driver, so you gotta taste everything. Even the rum. Go easy, you can go easy if you want. Oh, that's delicious. What do you think? I Isn't like that it. nice? Sweet, a little bit of um, savoriness. Nice. Then we're gonna use you <laughs> pork butt. I like to say pork behind. <laughs> you know, my mother watches this show. That's right, that's right. Here, you, okay. grab it, you grab it, open it. We'll talk about the actual okay. muscle. Pork yeah, booty. To, pork booty. All right, pork so Pork rear end. There are so many words for that part of the anatomy. Is there? Um, Pork, pork tushy. The irony is it doesn't even come from that part of the pork. It doesn't? No. Well, why do we call it pork uh, So if you look at the shoulder here, right, of, of the four, the yeah. four end, the four inch shoulder. Two hoofs. Two here. hoofs right here. So this is, um, uh, there's two shoulders, there's two pork shoulders, mm -hmm. right? The lower part is called the picnic, which is more the upper arm, okay. right? And this is actually up here. It's the most versatile, in my opinion, uh, cut of the pork because it's got the perfect fat ratio. Mm -hmm. It's got perfect connective tissue. It's great for this. Okay. And what we're gonna do is cut it into six equal pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna take my butt right here. <laughs> <laughs> take that butt. Oh wait, we haven't had a sip. Uh, we always drink on starting from cheers. scratch. Cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. We're drinking a 
Um, here for French 75. Ooh. This is my wife's play on it. Um, nice. It's a hibiscus flower. So gin, honey, mm. hibiscus, and champagne. That Cheers is to you. delicious. Cheers. And to Mrs. Tila. To, uh, to all family. Yes. Yeah, those will get you in trouble. Woo! Super easy to drink. All right, we're liquored up. Let's get the knives and the yeah, pork out. So I'm just going to cut six equal pieces. Yeah, you can do it that way. You can do it this way. Well, what would three. you do? I would, I, so in my mind, I'm always thinking a, a tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. That's like my overarching guidelines. So it's a tile mm -hmm. right now, right? And okay. the tile becomes a slice, which is only two long pieces, and then the slice becomes a dice. And look at you. You got six pieces right there. Even knife cuts are critical for even cooking. The tile becomes a slice, yep. which then becomes and a then the dice. And then the slice becomes a dice. And do it thrice. <laughs> there One, you go. One, two, three. See? Look at that. Okay. And that way, um, you kind of, uh, it's a regiment mm -hmm. to, to tell yourself how to cut things. That's gorgeous. Is this though. good? Yeah, that's These perfect. guys aren't too big? Okay. Nope, not at all. I'm following your lines, but okay. This yeah. is fun. So now the spice robe, I like to kind of season in this tray. Show me your technique. I, I'll do one. So I'm like, I'm not being shy. Like I can, you can use all, all these. There's sides. one way. Here's another way to do it. Let's it, go to town. Do. Can I ask a dumb question? There's no such thing as oh, Savannah. Sorry, another We're not dumb question. Dumb question alert. There dumb question alert. <laughs> well, like, could you ever, it's so tasty. Could I put it on a vegetable? A thousand percent. Okay. Now, fine? would you like sprinkle the rest and you wouldn't you want to? Go, 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 Yeah, like go. just sprinkle. Get See? in there. Um, okay. It's about feeling your way through it, and mm -hmm. if you didn't taste that rub, yeah. you wouldn't. You'd be a little nervous to apply some. Right. Here. Okay. Like we can wash I'm, hands. Since we touched raw pork, yeah. I, I will clear and wash hands. Raw How's pork, rub. We're okay. doing great, and I'm gonna crank up uh, your Dutch oven mm -hmm. and get that going. Let's talk about braising really quick. First thing we're gonna do. <laughs> All right, don't leave me hanging, girl. Here. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry. Together. I just want to celebrate every step. Perfect. Okay. Um, first step is always going to be browning your protein. Okay. Right? Uh, Hot pan. This is not there. a cast iron. This is a oh, no. Dutch Say oven. It. Uh, it is. So put those two together. It is a cast iron Dutch oven. Oh, okay. How's Great. that sound? Lovely. Yeah. Um, enough oil. You can measure if you want, but I'm. I, well, you, for me today, we're going to cook by feel. Okay. I like that. Now, it's hot. Do it's, I wait for the oil to get hot and start bubbling or anything? You know, you can always wait for a little bit of white smoke. Yeah. You can actually do a test. So why don't you take a piece and kind of touch it. Mm -hmm. And if you hear the shh, we're in good shape. It's not a very wide tongue. Right? Okay. Here, Lou. You hear the shh. I hear it. I totally hear it. Now, how many, it. like, am I, is this a don't crowd the pan situation? This is cold. This is hot. It's always don't crowd a pan situation when you're browning something. Okay. Let's talk about some basics while we're waiting for the brown. Number one, uh, don't we don't mess with it. Another thing we're building, a concept of fond. Have mm. any of your chefs talked fond. about F-O-N-D, fond? No, fun, fond. but not yeah, fond. Yeah, fond. Fond is fun. Fond. It's a fabulous. What is it? Um, if you lift that piece up and we mm. look into the pan, you see the bits that are sticking? Yes. Those are gonna become beautiful, crispy bits mm. that later we're gonna pull up and incorporate into the sauce. Okay. Think about fond as foundation of flavor. Girls just wanna have fun. That's exactly okay. right. Now, is this one of those deals That's where you gorgeous. sear on all sides? Is, is, you want and I'm gonna have to prop coverage. it up? Yep. Okay. Look at that. Look at that guy. That is now that's we're exactly what we want. Let's get the next contestants up. Absolutely. Can I put it right back on I here? I totally think you can. I think that's going to be somewhat controversial out in the world. Oh, okay. But remember, team, at 165 degrees, yeah. everything is, is And sanitized. just relax, everybody. It's yeah. Chef Tila. I, like I think that. he knows what he's doing, See? okay? So don't get all worked trust up about us. it. Trust us. Trust. Don't trust me. No, but trust, trust Savannah. Him. Okay, these look good. Let's start building flavor. So okay. how about a little bit of that onion okay. first. Now you can start scraping that okay. fond. Scraping up the bits is releasing of the There fond. you go. It sounds, more, it sounds sexier, doesn't it? Release the hounds. Release the hounds. Okay. We're going to make the braising liquid now. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to do red wine. Okay. Okay. Um, and you could be any alcohol, but yeah. red wine is going to go with this kind of darker, richer braise. Okay. So whenever just, you're doing alcohol, just a really good tip because this might be hot and it might flare. There's a small chance. So take a half step back. I like to just put the lip of the bottle here oh. and just pour away. I yeah. don't know what it is. Uh, enough cup to is. kind of coat the bottom. Like, see how we're almost at the bottom? Is that good? Now we coat the bottom. That's it. Good? Okay. See how easy that I is? I do. Okay. Yeah. And now you can scrape, use that. Now you've deglazed. You're officially deglazing. Deglazing yeah. all the day long. Once you feel this pan smooth, yes. you've done a great job releasing the font. You're done. Okay. Okay. Um, now we're going to build liquid more. Okay. All right. And uh, this is fun. Is that fun? Yeah. Cola is excellent for braising. I. We'll stand on that. So is that next? Cola? Yeah, that's next. Yeah. Crack that can okay. and give us about a half cup or a cup. The carbonation, the caramel, the sugar, the phosphates. I mean, that's so interesting. Isn't that fun? 
think Lamont? that's enough? Beautiful, right there. How fun. Right? Um, and now... Did you I, just make that up? No, no, I used to call it a braised carnitas to braise uh, short ribs. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the, the flavor of, of, of the cola. Yeah. Now, all right, now we're gonna add the, the pork back in and we're gonna add okay. more liquid. Okay. But we need a visual cue. We need to know okay. how much. So now, so. am I gonna put all of these guys now, in Now, all here? of it goes in now. It does, Because okay. we're not worrying about crowding the pan. Mm -hmm. See the rate of boil? Yes. I want to simmer. There's hardly One any more. room for this big old that's, piece of butt. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Our fundamentals of braising, liquid can never be higher than halfway up the protein. Okay. Okay, so that knowing that, we need barbecue sauce. Am I All tasting right. the barbecue sauce? I think, remember, Jet Tila says taste every taste layer. Taste everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, taste everything. So knowing, I'll get rid of it. I like that. And am I gonna stir it around so it's yeah, everywhere? Yeah, perfect right there. Do you think we're halfway up the biggest pieces of protein yet? I don't know, I don't wanna get the wrong answer, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes. I say we're almost there. Okay. Because okay, now we're gonna account for three hours of braising okay. and some reduction. Mm -hmm. So maybe a, a touch of chicken stock. Okay. A touch of chicken stock. So I don't need too much. No. The chicken stock just sort of to get us to the level we want. That's exactly right, okay. Tina. That's All exactly right. right. We're done. Okay, but don't I need to stir it up? Or just anything? a little bit, because you know what's gonna happen at 325 degrees, mm -hmm. it's gonna simmer in, in the pot. So it's. This gonna looks stir. amazing. I'd eat it right now. To I'm the oven it goes. Away. 325. I want to make sure that the uh, the brazier is in the middle of the oven. So set your rack. Oh. So when the when it's in, it's right in the middle. Okay. And then see you later, braise. Bye. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. We got three good. hours to kill. What should we do? Uh, I think we need to make the Asian apple slaw. Okay. Which are basically in a cook's in a cook's mind, just how to make coleslaw. Okay. But we're gonna start with a, about a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. All right. What does slaw taste like to you? Flavor, yeah. Um, like the hot, little, sour, salty, sweet, or savory. Uh, Ooh, yeah, like acidity. Yes, yeah. Why don't right. we start with sweet? Okay. And again, uh, we're so gonna be. So you put a little using, honey. How much? I'm gonna go two tablespoons here. Do you know your your um, your your conversions yet? How many teas into a table? Of course I don't. No big deal. We're just gonna learn one today. Okay. I think three teas to the Table. Oh, you know what? I huh. never knew that, and I've always wanted to know that. There you go. So, uh, we've got soy sauce and sesame oil. Okay, that's one, a tablespoon. One each. Okay. One each. And I'm using soy sauce here because it creates salt, creates um, a little bit of umami, the mm. savoriness. If you don't want a soy sauce, go salt. Okay. Now, sesame oil, same thing, one tablespoon. One cup of rice vinegar now. Oh, cool. We're going to work that in slowly. I'm going to get the lumps out. That's wow, dressing. that's nice. Should right. we taste it? But it's so important. Ooh, I love that. Is that nice? Toasty, yummy. Oh Good. my gosh, I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you wanted more sweet, you know where to go. If you want more salt, you know where to go. Yes. Again, intuitive cooking. Chop, chop time. Uh, I'm going to start with the cabbage. Okay, this is the intimidating cabbage. We've had we've had some issues with cabbage before. Talk to me. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Yeah, tame the beast. tame the beast, then it rolls around on us less. Okay, yeah. woo! If I were to think about everything as tile, slice, dice, yes. I would think this is the tile. Okay. And then what if this was the slice? Okay, I'm not sure I understand that. So but me, okay. I'm just saying like half the half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. 
Okay. This is the spine of the knife, mm -hmm. right? You're bunched up against the board. If you took a half step back, mm -hmm. you give yourself more room to breathe. Mm -hmm. And if you made sure that spine was flat, mm -hmm. think about perpendicular, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. always gonna have straight cuts. Oh, you're just sort of using I'm a just visual using, guide. That's it, it's, a, it's a, like see. a landmarker. Okay. Juliani Apple. Juliani Apple. We're looking for about that eighth to quarter of an inch pieces. Is this it? I'm doing these round slices? Yeah, okay. because uh, the, we're going to end up with a matchstick. Oh, so we'll okay. take that round slice, which and is And then our, make little matchsticks. That's oh, it. Oh, I see. I lay them on top of each other. The stack height is totally up to your comfort level. Okay. And then what I do is lay them up, and then same thing. We're uh -huh. done with apple. Okay, good. And now we're going to go to carrot. I flatten round things. Boom. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then I lay them on their flat side. Mm -hmm. Now that, oh. that keeps us from getting cut. Okay. And, and a carrot's gonna give you a lot of resistance. Really Tile great. slice dice. Tile slice that dice. means first mark it out, then yep. slice it, then chop it up a little That's bit. That's it, because... Okay, now I see what you mean. So now we can toss it, right? Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Would have been good if we had a bigger bowl though, right? <laughs> so I would do just a good pinch of salt. You mean then... salt and then turn, salt yeah, and turn. exactly. Oh, just a good, a good thing of salt right now. Done. And then we'll turn. And then turn it. But that's not going to make it all too salty? Like no, nope. that's more. perfect right there. Yeah, because that's why we tasted the dressing first. Yes. So we know kind of how much salt we need. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome, Savannah. Okay, this really does look good. I think it. we can sesame now. Just um, like sprinkle, Yeah, just shush, 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 and then do another toss. Okay, good? Yeah, looks okay. beautiful. Yes. So we're going to let it chill a little bit. Chill. Yes, chill, chill. Chill. See okay. you later. Bye-bye. Bye, bro. Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back after 49 years of Title IX, but we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Pulled pork's braising. Yep. Oh, we're almost there. Uh, the slaw is relaxing. And then we're going to get to cornbread. I like to break it into different um, components. So we're going to okay. do dry, wet cream butter. We okay. got the flour. Yeah, so why don't you throw cup of in um, a cup of cornmeal. Yeah. Here you do want to measure. Yes. Right? And That's one thing I do know from baking. Yeah. You kind of have to be on it. Okay. There you go. Four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Um, you got it. And okay. I usually consider um, salt a dry... Uh, uh, yeah, I would. But here's a good tip. Like, usually when you're creaming butter, uh, sugar's not a dry. Like your cookie recipe. Sugar right? goes with the liquids. There it is. Okay. One teaspoon kosher salt. Okay, these it. are dry. Whisk them. Let's whisk them together. Okay. Now, you're going to do the wets now mm -hmm. in uh, that large measuring bowl. Okay, so. And you're going to start with eggs. Uh, one thing I learned is you don't do it on the edge. Yes. So that was one thing. Look at you, man. Mm -hmm. You got this. Now, I did yeah. learn on one show how to do the one hand crack. Should okay, I try save, it? Do that. Do the Save the last one, please, okay. for one hand. But it's a real messy situation. It's go. not really. Yeah. Like, second hand got in there late. Okay, so work in progress. So let's whisk up those eggs okay. until uh, mm -hmm. totally together where you can't tell if it's white or if it's yolk. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. And then I'm going to fly in your milk. Okay. 
There it is. One and two thirds cup. Mm -hmm. Pour it right in. Pour it right in. Whisk that together. Okay. And you've basically separated your dries. Mm -hmm. You've got your wets. And I'm going to bring in the mixer to cream butter. Have you creamed butter? I have not. Okay, this is important. This is a really good concept okay, to learn. Okay, so is this done enough? That's good? lovely. Okay. We'll put it to the side. Oh, I love the mixer. Okay, creaming butter. Yes. Uh, oh, first, do we need to get acclimated with mixer? I actually know this mixer. Okay, good. I have this mixer. Okay. We're going to go to the paddle. paddle. It says 12 tablespoons of butter. That's one and a half sticks. Yep, so yeah. save us half a stick for, for, for greasing the dish. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I see this is room temp butter. Yeah, which is really important, mm -hmm. team. You can't cream butter that's okay. not room temp. Then we need now a cup of sugar. sugar. Yep, okay. cup of sugar. Low so, first. Low. What we're doing here is using the sugar, mm -hmm. because it's coarse, to whip air into the butter. Okay. That's all we're doing. This is gonna give you a really light, fluffy Fluffy, blender. okay. That's period, so now you go higher. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is color. Oh. It's a pale yellow. Uh, it's gonna start to become one fluffy, beautiful mass. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna get even more pale. Now, I can get obsessive about pushing stuff down Which, on the side, should thank, I? Thank you for mentioning it, because it's so important. So let's turn it off mm -hmm. every so often, scrape mm -hmm. down. Scrape down. Okay, good. So it's good to be a freak about this? It's totally, when it comes to okay. baking, yeah. when it comes to cooking, absolutely. I do. All so right. now I'm going in. We're whipping and again. I'm going to go straight up to fast, right? Yep. That's it. You're doing it. You could take this time and grease our baking dish. Okay, now I'm like, maybe I should just do this. Done. See, what we're going to do now is work the batter together by alternating dries and wet. Wow, well, okay, so do, do a little dry, a little wet. Yeah, maybe a third at a time. Okay, okay here we go, and then we're gonna do this a and little. Slow nice and really slow, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I don't want to bit it all in my face. That would be fun though. Now add a little. Add about a third. See how it just comes together? Now mm -hmm. stop, we'll go alternate okay. back to. Yeah, the whole idea here is good incorporation mm -hmm. without over mixing. Okay. Uh, flour, when over mixed, will create gluten, Gluten will give you a very tight crumb, okay. and we don't want a tight crumb. Never so. want a tight crumb. Boo! Boo tight crumbs. Or a little this much. Yep, and like you can go a little more now. So. Like that? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Should I be spatula -ing? Uh I think is this is a good time to maybe stop and give it a scrape down. Yeah, I think so. I have a scraping here. Just not as bad, yeah. though, because it's liquidy. It's You're but doing still. It. Okay. And I think we're at the point now that we're a third. You can just dump, dump it all in. in there. Yeah, for sure. So we're at that point where the batter can handle kind of the rest of the ingredients. Okay. No problem. How do you know that? Uh, I'm looking at the mass it's become, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's stable. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm looking for. There you go. So How'd you get into cooking anyway? My family immigrated in the 60s. We had restaurants in China. So my grandparents had restaurants, parents had restaurants. There was really it's nowhere in, else for me to go. It's in your jeans. Yeah, it's, it's called not being good at school. No, did you grow up cooking? Yeah, so I worked in our grocery stores as a butcher, as wow. a produce guy. Oh my gosh, that's how you know so much. So I did it all. Get in there and let's get all, okay. all kind of the... Just make sure I really yeah, got it mixed really in Really well. kind of a, like use the that blade and almost fold. There okay. you go. And now I'm just going to pour it in. Do you have that's any all. pouring techniques? Um, you know, not really. Okay. I, I, I don't. I just try to... Kind of cover and then tap, tap, tap. And if you're one of those people like chunky cornbread, mm -hmm. like jalapenos yeah. or corn, uh, this is kind of right before we won't go into the pan. You can, okay. you can incorporate all your. Besides what would you put in? I would bacon. Yum. <laughs> Oven wise. Yes. 400 degrees. Okay. 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. After 20, about 20 minutes, I would check with the little cake checker. Yeah. And we've done it. Shall I bake? Let's do it. Well, let's do it. Savannah, we've done so much. Oh my gosh. The slaw is ready to go. We got the cornbread. I think it's time to pull out like the brioche buns and start to build lunch. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go check on the pork. Okay. I'll bring it over. And then here we go. Wow. Woo! That looks awesome. It looks incredible. Oh man. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're gonna shred. Right. Shred, okay. Yeah, do you right. allow? Yeah, And I'm cool. putting on my plate. Just put it right on your sheet pan okay. there. All of them are, you take three, I'll take three. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Oh, geez, it's falling apart. Yeah, isn't that, well, first. Is that a good thing? Let's just enjoy how, how I mean, soft and tender it is. that is. Oh my gosh, it's like melting your mouth. Man, this is, this is what braising does. It okay. takes a tough piece of meat and turns it into something that feels and tastes really expensive. Okay. Uh, okay, lots of options here. 
the double fork it's thing. It's showing. So weird. It's literally just shredding, okay. and uh, right. it's personal preference. I like kind of a, a chunkier pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Allie likes kind of a very fine pulled pork. Okay. So that's that's house rules. What okay. I call house rules. So what is Savannah's house? house rule? The house rules are what Allie says. Yeah, yeah. There Whatever you go. Whatever your wife says, I, I agree with. I just want to eat it right now. <laughs> Just oh, really? Savannah? Put a bib because on. I have your box of spoons. Oh. Oh. For you. Okay, love it. All right, I get to taste it. Yay. You have to taste every layer because okay. it's going gonna, it's gonna to morph a little bit. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes. Really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. I like it. So once it's shredded, mm -hmm. um, do you mind putting that barbecue sauce oh, yeah. into all this delicious kind of pan sauce? That this we made? whole thing? The whole thing goes okay. in. Mm -hmm. I'm just stirring it up, right? You're stirring it up. And then we're gonna marry uh, the pork back into the sauce. So it gets almost like another base thing. I Great. can't believe I made this. What are you talking about? It looks so good. You killed. Okay. Savannah, pulled pork is ready. I'm gonna go get the cornbread. cornbread. All right, here we go. I'm gonna drink. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. Save me some. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. That is pretty. I'm gonna put it on your trivet. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. You can let this cool in the pan. You yeah. can eat it warm. You can flip it out and let it cool and get crispy edges, whatever okay. you want to do. But for today, I think we're just going to serve it as a side. So do you want to carefully take that butter knife and then cut it into squares? Yeah, should I? Yeah. Dial, yeah. tile slice dice. You go, girl. Yeah, and if you don't mind placing it in this uh, yeah. tin, and we've made honey butter, mm. which is basically room temperature butter, Yeah. swirled honey in there, and a little bit of flake sea salt I mean, on top. It sounds delicious. It's easy to make things fancy. Should we taste? Yeah, we're you always get to taste every yeah, layer. Yeah, we don't need spoons for this one. No, here, I'll give you a little Thank bite. Thank you very much. Thank there you. you. Go. I'm mm -hmm. so good at that. Look at that. Look at the crumb. I mean, the crumb. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the no crust. Gluten there. What? No, it was right. <laughs> What's gluten? Mm. There's no gluten. Mm, it tastes delicious. Mm. Shall we build? Yes. Okay, so here is the slaw that you made. Okay. Here is, this is a brioche bun. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to do a little bit of uh, sauce. You can go really big if you want. I'm gonna yeah. go manageable today. Me too. Okay. We have to eat on TV, so we don't wanna be like... <laughs> exactly Okay, right. so you do that. And we'll just do some slaw on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do you barbecue sauce the top layer uh, or no? Yeah, I totally would. Why I... not? Okay, yummy. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Making a sandwich, that is something I mm. know how to do. All right, Savannah, look These what look we good. did. That looks excellent. Load them up. Load them up. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to the table and, and, and kind of recap and eat lunch. Okay. All right, you got this. You want to me give you this? I'll grab this. Okay. Okay. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, and we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Oh, here we go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Pulled pork, slaw, cornbread. I mean, this is a perfect summer meal. It really is. Um, also, a lot of techniques to take with you. Yeah, for right. sure. Braising. I mean, that was incredible. Good. Okay, but let's eat. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Mm, I'm, I'm sorry with liquid food. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry, exactly. But... I, I can relate. <sighs> you hit me with the piece of cornbread. I got you. Oh, I got to try some of that butter, you too. absolutely do. This is my favorite. Really easy to kind of fancy mm -hmm. up. So good. Mm. This cornbread melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh, man, that, that when you cream that butter, it just really lightens up this whole thing. Mm. 
Tell Allie I like her cocktails. Mm, I will. She's invited over. <laughs> this is delicious. Not good? Mm, mm. I like these plates because they're, well, it's a messy kind of, it's like a trough. We need some of those wet towels. <laughs> I'm yeah. into that. Um, you know, it's very barbecue inspired, right? Yeah. And these are really inexpensive. Anyone can go to a restaurant supply store, uh, get what, what these are called, like eighth sheet pans mm -hmm. or quarter sheet pans. Uh, you get some fancy decoration. And it's really just tiny little moments mm -hmm. that, that turn your dinner parties into something fancy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how good that is. Mm. And you don't have to make a sandwich out of it. You could have just done some coleslaw, some chips, eat that, with a fork. That's the whole idea here is like mm -hmm. you have a little barbecue lunch without smoking things for 12 hours. Yeah. And the pork is savory, it's sweet, it's kind of luscious, the slaw with the acid. It's really a knockout combination. It's all working. Yum. Jet, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You are a very patient teacher. No way, you're an outstanding it. cook. Thanks, mm. Savannah. Cheers to us. Cheers to us. Good morning. Drastic action. The Federal Reserve dramatically raising interest rates, attempting to wrestle inflation down from 40-year highs. Borrowing money now more expensive. The big question, will it work?